Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to see if I can kind of repair or redeem this old box. This was actually one of our very first wood burnt boxes back in like 2008 I think um, that whenever we first started vending at craft shows and stuff. Uh, I wanted to sell, you know, wood burnt boxes because I had a lot of fun making them. And this one just never sold. It never found a home. Um, and so I've held on to it. But it has, like, majorly split. And, like, I, I've gone through and I've already removed the latch and the hinges. And I think I'm going to take off down here at the... Oh, yeah. That just popped right out. Sorry for the loud noises. Um, but I've got all this stuff in here. Um, let's see if I can't, well, the, the top has the same pattern as what is on the sides on it, but I've had this sitting kind of in front of a window, so it is majorly, majorly warped. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to redeem it, but let's see how it goes. Well, the first box wasn't salvageable, but I think this one may be. For those of y'all who have been following my channel for a long time, you may actually recognize this chest. Oh gosh, from like, I don't know, six years ago, <laughs> which I'd had ambitions at the time of making it where it like opened up into like this fairy diorama, but I've come up with a much more practical use for it. And that is for keeping my daily makeup crap, um, or like it's got my night, my morning and night creams, some make like just anything that I wear, like on the daily, like my sunblock. I've got my essential oils, some like perfumes and highlighter and stuff, my favorite makeup brush. So it's just something that can keep my vanity a little less like nightmarishly cluttered. And I think I want to, I don't know what I think actually. It keeps making this horrible noise whenever I open it up. Um, but I don't know if I want to keep the front hinged first off. I don't know what I want to do with it, like, at all, actually. So, I'm going to start, and I've decided I am going to keep the lid. The rest of the box is just unsalvageable, I think. Um, but I can use it for setting my makeup and stuff in right now. Noise again. But yeah, I've got my jars that I like to refill. Like, this actually isn't even that... Uh, serum anymore. It's my homemade serum of just like vitamin E oil, uh, retinol, and uh, hyaluron hyaluronic acid. I don't know. Um, and essential oils. And speaking of my essential oils, and then my little brush. And then, what is that horrible noise? I don't know. We'll figure it out. And then this is just a little insert. There will be links loud noises y'all there'll be links to all these organizers and stuff down in the video description as well as all the different tools and materials that we'll end up using but since we are at the very start of the project i have no idea what we're going to be using and what we're not going to be using so i just want to go for the ride now i am going to use this brush to this thing is dusty y'all it had lived on a shelf for like years um And then just keeps getting moved around from different shelf to different shelf. So I'm just going to lightly dust and remove. I have these. Okay, what's making that noise? What's happening? Does it just. This is life now. Okay. Um, it's my box of farts of angry, hateful fart sounds. Um, but yeah, just kind of cleaning this up out of there. I got some little pokey uppy um, screws from where I attached this hinge onto the bottom to make that front open and close. Now, I'm gonna have to make some feet, I think, for on this. Oh, that's not even attached anymore. Well, by the power of Mod Podge, we shall make it uh, slightly more attached. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to start 
we're just painting the whole thing black but yeah but we're gonna test out I've lost my black paint where on earth did it go right bro I know where it is okay so I found my paint and I'm just gonna use the same dirty old brush to just glob it in there and start really slathering it on and this is just apple barrel jean jeans boots with the fur um this is just apple barrel paint so it you know it's super affordable but i hesitate to use the term cheap because this paint does me pretty good like to me it cheap implies something about the quality as well it's not just a price thing it's a quality thing and this apple barrel does exactly what I need it to. I'm just, I could take the hinges off, you guys. I'm not going to. I should, though. I really should. Okay, I will. Let's take the, let's take all the hardware off. You know, now that I got my paintbrush dirty in the amount of time crunch. Just using a super little. Actually, it's the biggest of my little, um, screwdrivers. Yeah, it matches all of my other screws, so. I'm going to keep removing these, and then, um, like, I am taking all of the hardware and pieces apart and off, and then I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, so I'm taking off the last screw on the oops, on the hinge. And then yeah, that just lifts right off. And then we can take off the front. Oh, that's challenging. Um, we'll take off that as well. And then we're also gonna be taking the handle and latch off of the top but all of these like bands um, that really seem to just be decorative and barely held on there um, we're gonna be leaving those on Oof. and probably while we have the hardware off of this I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up as well because this is pretty grimy so I've recruited my beloved Randy to help me out so he took the screwdriver and is taking off some of the hardware so I'll get this latch here in a minute but in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and be painting the inside solid black. I'm gonna wait on the outside because I have some different little acrylic components that I've cut, not acrylic, but like resin components that I've cast that um, I don't want a layer of glue or a layer of paint between the glue and the wood. And I'm gonna see if we can utilize any of these. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be using any of them on the inside. I may be doing decoupage on the inside, but either way, for that, I'm pretty sure, you know, I've never decoupaged before, but I'm pretty sure having a base color of uh, paint is not a bad thing. Man, this brush is doing a good job of laying down just a bunch of color. <clears throat> I love it. Y'all, like, painting is so much fun. Like, and I never really considered myself an artist. Like, I've always considered myself, like, an artsy crafts person. Don't get me wrong. Like, um, but not, like, a painter. But I love painting three-dimensional stuff. Like, I feel like it's similar but different enough that it kind of qualifies in my mind and in my heart as something different. But it is still just covering something in paint is so fun <laughs> so and I don't mind getting some paint like there on the edges and stuff too like I don't mind that getting in there all the little nooks and crannies there's not a whole bunch of little nooks and crannies just yet but y'all I'm so excited about this at the time of recording this is the second piece of something that I am prepping up for my temple room for over on the monster vlog if any of y'all are into yoga or belly dance or flow arts or gardening or any like stuff like that 
you are more than invited to come over and join me on the monster vlog because if it's something that I'm doing that's not specifically in the craft room, um, I post it up over there and I'm having just a ball. Like we are, again, at the time of recording, 31 days into a year of yoga, which <laughs> has been phenomenal and amazing and I can't wait like every single day I'm more excited than the day before I didn't think that was possible yet here we are um ooh, look at that it's so beautiful it's just flat black <laughs> like and I'm like mm. but oh you know what we should do it, no we're gonna decoupage it okay before I get too super excited about existence <laughs> we're just decoupaging which i am still excited about but you know that halo paint that we did on the um t -t -t epic fairy jewelry box which i love by the way it is uh art it, it's on my vanity and it makes me happy every single time i look at it <laughs> and um i had so much fun making that with y'all but that halo paint that we used and then capped in resin, I was thinking about doing something here on the inside with that. Hmm. And we probably could, but I was going to try to utilize the, the hood of the trunk, like the lid, um, with like maybe some magnets and stuff to be able to, I was going to put a magnet on the back of like my 10 times mirror, like uh, my magnification mirror and some different like tools that I use when I'm doing my face in like stuff just basically anything that's laying about like my bobby pin thing I might be able to put a magnet and then magnet mount across the top things and tools like that that I'm tired of laying about on my surface because everything gets so dusty like this house grows dust and then it doesn't help that we have like two dogs two cats a sasquatch and a hippie just bumbling about through the whole place <laughs> um I mean, I don't mind it, but it does make house cleaning. Like, I'm a lot more likely to dust if I don't have to tidy up first. Randy, what do you think? Ta-da! Oh, you got all the bits and pieces? They can just go straight into here. I got it. Thank you, honey. And there's the screwdriver. Ooh. Oh, thank you so much. I was having such a hard time. Okay, we'll just paint around it. It's on there though, isn't it? Did I? Oh, honey, that's a good idea. I'm not going to do it, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> that's what, Taping off stuff is so much work. <laughs> Poor Randy. He's chock full of good ideas and solid advice that I never take. And then like 30 minutes later, I'll be like, Wendy, I should have done the thing that you said I should have done. And he's so sweet. He's like, I know. And he'll help me clean up the mess. He's the long suffering Randy Scotch. Thank you, honey. He just, mm -hmm. he's the greatest. And then I just get to do the fun part and come in <laughs> and paint it. Oh, I probably should have, well, that, I don't know. We'll paint something else in the meantime. But yeah, it's um, a lot more likely to dust if, they, if I don't have to pick up like a million tiny little things and being a magpie though there's like a million tiny little things everywhere all the time like uh every gosh late fall early spring I go on this like craze where I'm just putting acorn caps and like a squirrel eaten walnuts like the shells from the black walnut trees outside that the squirrels just leave laying about like I can't not pick them up <laughs> and whenever we go to the river like I bring home seashells and stuff and they just end up in like the weirdest places and so I really need some organization. Clearly I cannot change my core nature of being just a gremlin, a swamp gremlin that just hoards things. So trying to make what I'm doing a lot more accommodating of that fact. I have no idea what wood this box is made out of. Probably like poplar or balsa or birch on the bottom that feels like really flimsy but the sides I don't know I know nothing about wood unless it's like still growing I have no idea how to identify it 
and even then unless it's got leaves on it i have no idea how people tell they can just like look at the bark and be like oh yeah this is a fig newton um i i don't know how they do that i aspire though i aspire i've finally gotten to where i can identify um most of all the trees at our local parks and on like randy's grandpa's property that his grandma and grandma pan grandma and grandpa planted because they actually planted a tree for each of the kids each of the grandkids um not all the trees made it but you know now they've got some 30 year old trees and randy will be like that's the one from when my cousin was born that's the one from when my sister was born that's the one from when i was born like it's so cool like literally family tree but uh, still as far as being able to tell what kind of tree it is just by like the cut lumber especially i can tell cedar from the smell of it and the color like but i feel like that one's pretty easy like if any of y'all are wood wizards let me know how you tell um, <laughs> what the species and wood type is yeah just by i don't know sniffing it or something This is taking the paint really, really well. And I didn't even sand it or anything. I really like that whenever the paint's still showing a little bit of the wood grain through. It really makes me happy. We're gonna have to glue that up, but I wanted to get the paint on. And then we'll just like sneak in there and get the glue. Pink, pink, pink. Okay, and now I'm going to set this guy. Just right there, I guess. And let's get some paint down on this bad boy. What am I saying? He's a good boy. It's a pretty good trunk. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get too much paint on the front, though. And again, just like the last project I did like this with y'all, um, we could have just spray painted it, I suppose. I don't even know what that was. Oh, okay. Everything's okay. Um, we could have just spray painted it, but I have so much more fun. I don't know why stuff's still falling. Um, it's so much fun to just paint it and hang out with you guys. Uh-oh. I've run out of place to put my hands. Oh, well. So I think I'm going to have to go through my scrap paper and see if I can find something that... I like for decoupaging with. And I'm still just coming through. Fortunately the latch is metal so I don't mind getting a water-based acrylic paint on it because it should rub off pretty easily. Cool beans. Okay, so I'm going to set that on top of my rinsing cup. No, I can't rinse my thing out. I don't even know. Like, where did this pile come from? Why did it just attack me? Oh. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together now. I'm going to put the cap on my paint. I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'll meet you guys back here in just a few minutes after this has dried a little bit. While the paint dries though, I am just going to get in there with a little bit of this super thick tacky glue. We could also use super glue. That'd be fine, I guess. But I don't feel like gluing my hand to a project so just yet. It's a little early in the day for that. Um, so I'm just lifting the wood and globbing a little bit 
of this super thick stuff. Now it cleans up really nicely. This is water-based, so whenever I do stuff like this and then make a giant mess with it, it's pretty, pretty easy to clean up. So there's that. We can just come through with the shop towel instead of our finger because this thing will bite you. It gives me splinters so much. I probably should have sanded it, but here we are. And we can even use masking tape. I can't do that with my mouth. Well, that's a disaster. Okay. You gotta put down the ducky if you wanna play the saxophone. Story of my life. <laughs> like, I've been practicing that. My dad used to say it to me. I say it to me. Even Randy has started saying it to me. Um, we'll start it. He's been saying it for like 15 years. And I still have not learned that I only have two hands. Sometimes I should just set the project down and do the thing with my two hands. <laughs> Does masking tape stick to wet stuff? Not really. Okay. Well, it's holding a little bit. Ooh, there's some glue there on the inside. We'll just whoop. come in, clean up those spots. Now, again, this is going to get decoupaged, so I'm not super worried about if some glue oozes out over there. I just do want to make sure that everything's staying put. I don't know if that's, yeah, that's not even holding. Okay. Well, I'm going to sit here and hold this until it's dry. <laughs> Huzzah! I set my paint on it, and now that's going to hold that there. Okay, so the paint, and I mean, there's still a little bit of dampness to the touch, but it's no longer, not that you'd be able to tell, but it's no longer leaving paint whenever I touch it. So I am going to set this off to the side just to let it set up the rest of the way and here I have some paper swatches like well not swatches but like actual pieces of paper that I'm oh that one's so pretty um that I'm trying to choose from and these are double-sided so I've chosen these out of my paper packs to kind of figure out which ones I feel like this one's uh, I love it but maybe not for this really really like this. whoa gravity works hard <laughs> we work hard but gravity works harder um I really really like this one here I'm thinking for the inside of the lid but I may also ooh, really like that one too I thought I picked a purple in that same no I must not have um okay I think I'm gonna do this one then for the inside Looks like I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit, but to just bring it there on the inside, I'm going to get some exact measurements here and just use a paper cutter to like trim the sides down, I think. Okay, so for y'all, all y'all who are experienced at paper craft and like, um, you know, not bumbling fools, please be patient with me but it looks like we are at 10 and 3 quarters inches. Don't know what that is in chicken nuggets, but um, wide. Hmm. So I'd like to shave kind of down the sides and see where that gets me. Let me see if I can't precariously juggle everything so if this is and this isn't even quite exactly well yeah it is it's exactly 12 inches hmm well I'm gonna start by just shaving it at the widest because I can't be troubled to do any math right now And I'm setting this scrap paper off to the side because we may be able to use it on other parts of the project or like on paper beads or something maybe.
like that would look really cool rolled up or just using for like maybe paper quilling I don't know and I love that it's dual sided absolutely love that so what's our measurement sitting at now so what was it we need 10 and 3 quarters oof so we are sitting at we need to shave off another half an inch okay looks like I can shave off a little bit more on this side because it's like I don't know I don't want to just be guessing all the time yet here I am <laughs> you know That's way too far in. There we are. Okay. So it's about a quarter of an inch. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna need to shave off just a little bit more still. I feel like I have more control with most of my paper on the work surface instead of hanging off the side. But we're all new at something at some point, so the best thing we can all do is just be patient with ourselves. But I just, I always have this nagging feeling that I'm like, I know there's an easier way of doing this. I don't know what it is, I just know that it's there. <laughs> Okay, so that's looking pretty symmetrical. Fortunately, I'm not too much of a perfectionist, so it isn't going to drive, drive me completely insane if it's, you know, a hair off of center. If you're working on your own project and you know that that's going to make you go crazy, though, then you do what you need to do to get to where you need to go. Now, I don't want to, don't want to cut too much off. Oh, that sits in there so nice. I should have measured both sides. One side's wider, you guys. So I'm just going to start there in the middle, I guess. like to measure this section how do I get in there and measure I'll just use some of the scrap paper like okay so from there to there where that bend is that is two and a quarter So I guess I'll need to find, there's the center line of this. So I'm going to do just a little, little pencil mark, teeny tiny. So that's one and an eighth then is where we'll need to, to, need to do the bend. One and an eighth. Flip this around. And I am going to be bending the paper just a bit that way. It'll fit nice and snug, hopefully, against, and that'll be erased just fine, I think. Now, how do we, this is going to sound so dorky, but how do I, like, fold paper, you guys? Like, I want to make it nice and, worst case scenario, we'll just flip it over. We'll make it look all boogery and terrible. We'll figure it out. Okay. So there's one fold. I kind of want it to be crispier than that. So I'm going to run my fingernail on it. 
first time decoupaging, guys. Be patient with me. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I like a nice crispy fold. rummage around oh yeah that fits in there just fine it's gonna sit so much more snug I think up against the uh, up against the wood okay so we'll do that fold again on the other side at the that's centimeters on that side one two and a quarter can't even see my pencil marks. Why am I like this? <laughs> okay, making sure that I fold on the pencil mark. Getting it folded. Getting it nice and crispy. Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. Yep. Good enough for government work. It fits. Oh, so cool. And I think I'm just going to leave the sides black, but I don't know yet. I do not know. I'm just excited to be decoupaging. Like, wow. <laughs> so I'm going to need to measure. I'm going to use the same bit of paper because I'm suspicious that those are just the same size. And I'm wrong. It's like an eighth of an inch longer. And again, I have somehow managed to have nowhere near enough space. That's all right. Now I do think I'm gonna come through here and do some additional like arting over what's already here. Just personalize it a little bit. Okay, so getting it folded on both sides. Making it nice and crispy. I just wanted to get this part right before going through. Oh yeah, that fits. Oh thank goodness. Cause like I was worried I was gonna have like some saggy wallpaper or something. You know what I mean? But um, I wanted to make sure that this part fit before um, doing any additional work into coloring or drawing on the paper. Cool. So. What is that, two and three sixteenths? But if you're following along with me and like working on your own project, um, these me these measurements are moot anyhow, like I think. Yeah, so that's two and three sixteenths. Chicken nuggies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mark. And I'm thinking about using some like metallic paint gel pens and all sorts of crap like I am so excited okay so let's do another test fit wait what have I done what's happening so that side's correct this side is totally not correct it is way too far over what has happened I should have measured it instead of assuming. It's the same. Did I measure from like the wrong line? I did. I went just a little too far. Okay, that's all right. We'll figure it out.
There we go. Making it crispy. Just cuz. Much better. Okay, perfect. And we'll just have a little bit of a crease there. Nobody will know. <laughs> oh, well look at that. I found some magnets. Very cool. Okay, so now I can actually just come in and like mark. And use a paper cutter. line it up and I'm going to be just a little on the side of it or directly on it that's fine too save that because I can always come through and like shave a bit off but it's a lot more complicated. Man, like, talk about cutting perfectly on when I'm trying to be off. <laughs> oh, very cool. Okay. So, I actually have a little bit of... This is Extra Fine Point Paint Marker. And I'm going to test a little bit on... Let's see. How does this do? Ooh. I'm going to test just a little bit on this scrap piece. Oh, I hate that. Whenever it won't. Bye. Because then it, that's, that's how I lose the caps. Um, I'm going to test. Yeah, get it flowing over here. Then, am I even in frame? I cannot tell. Yes, I'm in frame. Okay. Mm. And this is just going to add, I'm hoping, a little bit more dimension and just a little bit of like a metallic bling. Yes, that is what I'm looking for. Just a little bit more of a metallic shine. Now that's kind of just what I want to do at the end though. I'd like to add a little bit more color and pop and stuff to this. Alrighty, y'all. So this is what it looked like before we did any cutting or coloring on it. And this is what it looked like after. And I like it. It's very me. Next up, we are going to be mod podging this into the box. So I'm actually going to be using just the same brush. It's stained black, but it's clean. And I am using Mod Podge Hard Coat. Now it says to not shake it, but I do need to mix it up a little bit. So I have a stirring stick here. And um, as far as my research goes that I've been doing, and by research I mean like five minutes of Googling, <laughs> let's be real. Um, you could just use regular Mod Podge for this, like with for this application. I don't think hard coat is necessary. It's just what I have. So there's that. Okay. Let me 
have that nice and stirred up. Now, I don't want to be, um, where would my cups go? I'll use this. I don't want to be dipping my brush just straight into the uh, bottle, so I'm going to pour just a bit out here into a mixing cup. And this way, my whole bottle, I lost the lid already. Okay, uh, this way the whole bottle doesn't risk like getting spilled or dried out or anything like that. <clears throat> and it does clean up with water just fine. So I'm just gonna come in nice, even strokes, laying down the first layers of adhesive. I tell y'all what though, I'm having so much fun making this. Like, ha. <laughs> uh, it feels really good to be crafting for not just the sake of work. Like that's um, a danger I feel like uh, for that as crafters we don't really consider when we're like, well, you know, I wanna do this full time. I wanna make it a profession. And I'm in full support of that. I mean, it's what I do, but I, stopped at some point I stopped crafting for fun nearly enough and was just crafting for well I need to make this for a tutorial or I need to make this for a shop update and don't get me wrong at all I still have a ton of fun doing that but it's just a different flavor of fun to get to do it just for the sake of doing it like I don't have to worry about anything it's just make it like <laughs> that's so nice like I don't have to worry about it being good enough for somebody else or anything like that I've just got to do it for me and in a perfect world I get to do I don't know a project a week like that but realistically it'll probably be if I could manage a project per month that is like a personal project that would be really cool just because, you know, still got to work. <laughs> it can't just all be, I don't know, maybe it can. It can't all just be personal projects. And I am going to go ahead just to avoid any unevenness with like brush strokes and things getting up here on the sides. Because you can use hard coat as a sealer. And so I just make sure that it won't get scratched up here on the inside. And I do believe the Mod Podge hard coat has a satin finish, which is like halfway kind of, it's not matte and it's not gloss, it's just kind of satiny. Okay. So there is that. And now I'm going to take this and just start setting it in. Making sure our little folds are lined up. If there's anything excess, we can shave that off with a, um, oh, I had a little squeegee thing somewhere, I thought, but I must not, <clears throat> maybe just a piece of wood or something. Hmm. I'm just going to start here in the middle and start pressing outward. I want to be really careful to not get glue on my hands. As we come through, <clears throat> trying to not smudge up my um, chalk pastels as I come through, rubbing everything around. Really getting a nice adhesion, if I can. <clears throat> yeah, that's feeling pretty good. You could use a brayer, I think. Here I have just my acrylic roller for polymer clay. Just rubbing that along. Just something that's a little 
smoother and firmer than just rubbing with my hands. Oops. Well, not all of my dots were completely dry yet, it seems. I'm just going to burnish that in. Very cool. And now we can actually come through and start shaving off that excess paper. A more precise person than I wouldn't, might not have to do this, but I'd certainly much rather have to shave excess off than have to worry about, oh no, I left a big empty spot. There we go. You can always, always come back and shave more. You know, I've gotten a little into the wood there, but that's okay. Not just with a regular box knife blade. And so now from here, while everything's still nice and wet, I'm going to do my first couple of layers of hard coat over my paint. And it seems to, I probably should have, <laughs> now that I'm you know in the thick of it, probably should have sprayed it with some sort of sealer first like an acrylic sealer because it actually seems, and there's a glob of something right there. Let's get that glob out. It seems to have been dragging my purple a little bit, like my, uh... oh, there's another glob. What's it called? My color pencil pigment. Oh my gosh, just give me that glob. Okay, I got it. <laughs> like, wow. Trying to get it down with as little fuss as possible. That way I'm not dragging across and making everything all messy. Whoops. And yet here we are, dragging across and making things messy. I think I might just go through and do like a couple of layers of this. I don't think I'm going to put as much um, personalization into the um, the lining for the rest of the box just because it's going to have stuff in it. Like whereas this part here may not have anything on it. Like I'm not entirely certain yet. Like, I may do, like, some magnets and stuff, but we'll see. I'm really liking how that's looking, though. I'm just going to say. Makes me very happy. <laughs> yep. Pretty pleased. Making sure there's no heavy spots, no clumps, no chunks, no nakey spots. Very, very cool. I am just loving that, y'all. <clears throat> okay, so now I am going to rinse out. Ooh, I need to go get some fresh water. Before I rinse out my brush, there's just a little bit left in here. I am just going to seal the bottom of this box. just because in the time that it's going to take me to <clears throat> cut and prepare the uh, other paper, this Mod Podge will have dried up, I do think. And this way, this can just be hardening up.
probably should have done a significantly thinner coat, but here we are. <laughs> Shoulda, woulda, coulda. A little bit of a dangle off bit there. Oh, I'm so covered in glue right now. I mean, I could be more covered in glue, but I don't want to test it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting a nice, hopefully evenly thick layer of Mod Podge. Scraping off any excess back into the uh, dish. Very cool. Now, also, I am going to be attaching a like feet. Not a feet, but like a set of feet um, that I'm probably going to have to sculpt. Or maybe I might just do like some wooden beads onto the bottom of this, which we could adhere using this Mod Podge too. So let me search. Let me rummage. Haha. -ha. Here I have found. Ooh, I got a whole mess of stuff, y'all. Check this out. Oh, I'm going to use these as the feet. Two, three, four little feet a bunch of like miniature stuff i'm such a dork like like <laughs> i'm a grown-up i promise <laughs> for like for realsies okay now knowing where oh there's a hair in it too dog hairs yep um knowing that i'm going to be having the hinges on the front of this i need to make sure that they will not be these feet won't be in the way of my hinges. So I'm gonna have that one a little, no, we need way more glue than that one. Bonk. And, bonk. oh yeah, lots of glue, do the trick. So I'm just <laughs> dipping the end of this very generously into our Mod Podge hard coat and then I'm going to position it. A more accurate person than I would have, like, I don't know, measured literally at all. <laughs> so that's okay, though. We're not about that life. But yeah, just setting that there. Yep, just trying to make sure that they're not in the way in the slightest. Oh no, it fell over. Oh gosh, it's under my fingernails. Okay. Oh, I hate the feeling of glue under my fingernails. Eee, that's the worst. <laughs> so while the glue is still, still wet, <laughs> I am just checking and making sure, I'm just looking at and paying extra attention to the distance between the edge here on both of these sides as well as trying to make sure that they're lined up and again I'm not a perfectionist so it doesn't bother me a bit when stuff's a little askew so long as it's still like like it'll drive me crazy if it like rocks like if it's not level but this should be good so I am gonna set this off to the side oh gosh I don't have anywhere safe to put it um ooh, over here on top of my coffee machine Work. No, that's not okay. That stuff starts to set up pretty quick. Like already, I can't move them. So I am gonna just scoop into here and start laying. No, it's still tacky. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse my brush and do that stuff. I am going to let this dry. I'm sure there's instructions somewhere. 
long do I apply at least five coats? Dry 15 to 20 minutes between coats. Okay. I'm gonna go set a timer or something because I can't be trusted. So, I don't know about y'all, but I am all about hiding secret stuff, like, on my own personal projects like this. So, something that I'm going to do is grab my chalk pastels. And this is probably one of my favorite ways of just adding a little, tiny little tint of color to wood. Is just... Rubbing the chalk around the edges. I don't know if you can hear my dogs, but they're losing their minds. But I'm just going to do that. And then if I could find, like, I don't know, a blue, a light blue. This one will do me. And so it probably doesn't look like much right at this moment. And I'm going to do some yellow just right there in the middle. And like I said, probably doesn't look like much. But, let's stack these back together. Tidy workplace makes me happy. Even though, like, my workplace is never tidy. I can still try, right? Okay, so now from here, I'm going to start from the center and start blending outward. And then start blending outward further. Make sure that it is sanded enough that you're not going to be getting like splinters. Now the more porous your surface, the more tinting you're going to need to do, like the more pastel you'll need. And like how we have going on here, we can just get that extra pastel right out with a stiff brush. Nice little bit of tint to fill. And you could do that in whatever color schemes that you like, but I'm going to take some of our tacky glue, put that on the back of what we're doing, and you could use your finger or a popsicle stick or a piece of scrap wood to just spread that around. I need some. Just wipe it on my pants, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's my craft pants. So from here, we can just bloop, either eyeball it or measure it. And I'll do another layer of Mod Podge onto this when it's all said and done. I guess I could actually kind of measure a little bit. But yeah, so now there's a little thing just right there on the bottom. <laughs> okay, so while stuff was drying, I could not wait. Um, I was like, well, I, maybe I can kill some time with testing out like how everything's fitting in here. I removed some duplicates because again, like my vanity is basically just a, like an old desk. So it's got drawers that I keep everything in because I, you know, sometimes uh, whenever I'm doing a costume, I'll need black mascara, but I typically wear like brown or dark brown. So I have like multiples of different things I have, you know, but this is my 
I use it every day you know every day that I do wear makeup unless I'm doing a costume look this is my basic go-to and I was trying to think of a way that I could organize um, and utilize how I had hinged this front oops um, all those years ago because I guess you know I wouldn't really need to do it but it is nice to be able to like see in and it occurred to me because I've got these little like cardboard round boxes and I really would have preferred something maybe a little longer that way I could have put if I could have had like a little box for you know all my brow and eye pencils um you know just different stuff like that but I think this might be a really good way of having my jewelry that I wear on a regular basis because I know I just made a jewelry box but y'all would not believe how much jewelry I have and there's a couple of pieces that I wear you know almost every day of the week um and also this would give me just a little bit more organization but I don't know so I'm not I'm not like married to that idea yet but I am going to paint this wooden piece up to match um, the rest of it. So, tuck those away because if I decide that I am going to use them I can always dig them back out. Um, but the way that I had this organized before was in like a plastic insert and I don't know I don't know if that's ideal. So I'm not going to be gluing this in. I'm just using it as an option for now because I do want to always be able to have the option to evolve my setup. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and take all this out through the magic of editing. Okay, so I'm going to start painting the rest of the exterior. I don't think I'm going to decoupage the inside of the rest of the box just because um, it's going to be so filled of stuff I'm not really going to see it so I think just having the black and I am going to do a layer of like uh, of the Mod Podge to seal it because I really really like that um, but I am going to go ahead and paint no before we paint Can you tell I planned this out? Because I didn't. Um, I planned out the last one though, and you saw how much we actually stayed on course with that, which was not at all. So I'm going to actually just hold up a minute and see if we might not be able to start getting some cute little thingies going on here. Now I haven't broken off any of the flashing or anything like that on these and like how this one isn't exactly flat we can heat it up with a heat gun and then like drape it a little bit and that's probably what we will do for on the top as well but I'm also trying to decide how much of this am I going to have like do we use just the resin pieces or do I also do I incorporate some little moons and stuff because you know I want to um or do we my th my thinking is that we forego this part again but oh gosh like that did look so cute just heat it up and kind of you know put on there I don't know and we may do stuff like that here in the or, or on the sides maybe like I have been hoarding these pieces for ages but I keep not find just not finding the exactly perfect project for it but I think that I would like to I'm just gonna hang that there all haphazardly no I'll just prop it up um I've got this bouquet of peacock feathers that I thought would look really stinking cool decoupaged over the box. But again, I'm not entirely certain of how I'd like to do that. Like maybe just one? I don't know. 
and it seems like the spine of the feather, I know there's a technical term for that, but as soon as it starts getting kind of thick, it doesn't want to lay flat. And then what are we going to do here? That might look cool with something, like maybe some moss. Do I want to do peacock feathers? I mean, in my heart, yes. I want to do peacock feathers. But we got to figure this out before... Because you know, it's one thing to paint something on there and not like it and just paint over it, but I do not want to waste these at all. Do we make a beautiful little three-eyed monster box? <laughs> Almost like it's a mimic, but instead of eye eyes, it has um, peacock eyes. That might be pretty cool. I think let's do that. Okay, I'm going to try to take off then the latch. Oh, that is stuck on there. Because so I was really hoping... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that without a significant fight. Um, it'd be really cool to be able to glue, like, decoupage stuff on. And then put that on over. Okay. Now I am going to use my wire snips to kind of get in here. And just remove that. I am going to save this part because I love these little feathers. But yeah, if you try to press it flat, it goes sideways. And but you'll notice the feathers actually attach to kind of the front side of this, and the whole back side just provides support. So I'm going to see if we can't come in here at an angle and just kind of shave that down without damaging or removing and I took a little bit off I'm actually going to use the top of my just to make more room for my knuckles like I'm just going to try to plane this off with a razor Oh yeah. I mean, it's just taking off a very tiny bit, but every little bit is going to help so, so much in making this sit a little bit flatter. And again, I don't want to cut or damage anything. Well, it's an interesting experiment, but I'm not going to get too much about it. Okay, so we are definitely going to have to paint this black first because we can't be painting it once we have the feather on there. So, setting these off to the side. Let's go ahead and paint the entire exterior black. I'm going to start with the front piece because it's the smallest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dip, dip, dip. Bump, bump, bump. Ooh, what's coming out of there? We got a weird little goopy thing. There we go. Just a glob of dried paint. Paint, paint, paint. Choo, choo, choo. Paint, paint, paint. Choo, choo, choo. Paint your project. Paint your project. And we may end up doing multiple coats. I don't know yet. I just work here. <laughs> Oh, 
also a tidier person than me probably would have gone through and maybe used some wood filler to repair any gaps or dents or nicks in the wood. I like them, I think they give it character. It's one day when I'm old, I'm going to have all sorts of nicks and gaps and I don't want somebody to just come through and be like, ugh, that needs wood filler. No, that's, there's a whole life to this piece that I'd like to honor by just letting it be. We're beautiful because we were broken. It's our cracks and crevices that give us variation and make us very more interesting than just a perfect replica of newness. I mean, don't get me wrong, a clean slate can be really nice, but sometimes it's nice to already have something there to work with. Oops. Very cool making sure I've got all the edges, every little nook and cranny. I'm gonna make sure I have most of it off of the uh, latch before moving on to the next piece. Ooh, I really wanna make sure that I'm not touching the inside where we've already decoupaged with my dirty fingers. So I am going to touch up just a little bit here on the edges. Now fortunately that layer of glue actually enables us to um, wipe anything off. So, And I am adding in just a little bit. I didn't like that harsh white edge of the paper. I'm just kind of lightly brushing that in. There we go. Very cool. So now I'm going to do one end. tripod and I made such efforts to get it up and out of the way so I wouldn't do that yet here we are looking good and now grab it onto it now I'm not setting it on its other end but I am just holding it while we paint up this side From there, we can take it and just set it down. I'm actually going to set this off to the side. Oops. Oh goodness, my paintbrush is dripping on me. Why is that happening? Okay. <laughs> like, I don't even know what's going on. I don't want to fill up those holes that we were screwed into with paint, but if it's stripped out a little bit, you can actually kind of use the paint as something to grip on. But again, if it's stripped out, you may want to use a little bit of wood glue or tacky glue or something of the sort to really secure your screws in there. Because again, even though there's a handle on top, which really I guess we don't have to leave a handle on there, <sighs> now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and so we may just fill it in entirely, but um, just because there's a handle on there doesn't mean we have to use it. It could just be purely decorative. 
because this is it it is the rest of its life as far as I'm aware um, until I change my mind I suppose or something comes up will be living on my vanity it's not like a travel case or anything like that because honestly that handle wasn't going to be able to handle a whole lot of weight anyhow so we may just fill those in with paint I kind of really, really like having the handle or the latch still on there because it gives me a bit of something to hold on to without having to be touching the wood. I know this is probably super riveting for y'all, just literally watching paint dry or paint be applied rather. But you can always put me in fast forward, you can always skip ahead, unless you're here in the premiere. Hey everybody in the premiere. <laughs> I'm gonna use this as an opportunity for some shameless self-promotion. If you wanted to be here in the premiere, but you weren't, because you missed it, because YouTube didn't notify you, because YouTube's oh so good like that, uh, please consider signing up for our newsletter. It's free. Um, we send out exclusive coupons and notifications every time we have a new tutorial or a live stream that way you don't have to worry about depending like I said on YouTube um, we also have our craft along club where if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them um, we have started bringing back some of our exclusive live streams. We actually have a craft along a thon after party that's exclusive to our craft along club members. That's for our dollar and up members. And the more you pledge, the more you get. So we send out craft kits and we have our digital templates over on our members only page. Um, just all sorts of stuff. And we're trying to always keep it fresh and exciting for y'all. But uh, those are, it's always more than enough for you to just be here watching and enjoying yourself. But some folks want to be a little bit more involved and we wanted to give you guys a way of doing that. But more than anything, just being here. If you're enjoying yourself, thank you so much. <laughs> if not, what are you doing? <laughs> you clicked on my face. <laughs> but um, just y'all being here hanging out with me is more than enough to help keep our, hopefully, if YouTube will have mercy, um, keep our business going. So we appreciate y'all tremendously. You could tickle my like button if you want. But other than that, yeah, let's just keep it crafty. It's coming together pretty nice. It's just making all this racket, bumping around into everything. I think it had been really cool to have been able to use some of that like um, blackest black paint to really give this some like depth. Ooh, we got a little bit of paper trash stuck to it. Get that off of there. Very, very cool. Okay, so we are probably going to need to do another layer, <clears throat> especially because the different kind of wood that's arced over this doesn't seem very porous, so it didn't take to the paint very well. And I'm just going to kind of jab some paint into there, into the crack, too. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set this nice and safe off to the side. And... Oops in the tripod I'm so sorry we're just gonna come in here and paint the sides womp, womp, womp. Do, 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 do. now I'm not gonna paint the little feetsies yet because you'll notice that glue still is not dry it's already doing its job though it's doing pretty good
Oops. I'm just flinging paint on everything. Oh no. Part of me still really wants to do the resin pieces. I just don't know how we'd go about it, honestly. Like, hmm. There's so much, like, conflict and debate going on internally right now. And it's all, like, there's no depth to it. It's all like, ooh, but I could. Yeah, but what if I didn't? Ah, but what if I did? Hmm, but what if we didn't? Like, <laughs> ah, that's, like, the least helpful. Like, just my hamsters are running on their wheels going in circles. But, while it seems unhelpful and, you know, not really productive or anything, they still get somewhere. And those hamsters are running on their wheel. Very, very cool. Also, putting that coat of Mod Podge on this is going to make it a lot easier to clean as it seals out moisture. And so if I get, like, makeup spills or something, it's not just going to get soaked up into the paint and wood. It'll be a nice, hopefully, little varnished layer of protection. A little bit more paint. Now we could also use some different stamps and stuff and use some like metallic that would be so cool. Some metallic stamps. Mm, I think I like that. Okay, just coming through, making sure I've got everything touched up. my clean rinse water <laughs> like for an inexpensive paint this stuff is pretty heavily pigmented okay I'm gonna let all this stuff dry and then we will start doing the decorative stuff I'm going to paint the wooden insert off camera because well <laughs> um, I hope you guys are enjoying hanging out. I know I am, but I'm not gonna make you guys watch me paint every single piece. If you guys want more like crafty ASMR videos in the future where it's just, just, just painting, just covering stuff in paint, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. So have you ever like been working on a piece and then out of nowhere you just start to like hate it? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't hate it, but I am completely overwhelmed with decisions. I have no idea what I want to do, how I want to move forward. I have like decision fatigue. I found these really pretty cabs that I'm like, ooh, maybe I could use these. We'll see. We'll figure it out as we go. But um, I do have mo the mold still to be able to make more of these components if it turns out that what I have is not enough. So it's not like I'm stuck with, you know, well, I've got these three and that's it. No, I've got like technically a gallon's worth of these uncast. So, um, and that would get me, not gonna lie, pretty far. I would actually probably use my, um, smooth cast what, what's the name smooth cast 325 it's a color match liquid plastic though I do also have some that I think like casts into like a yes smooth cast onyx fast so it's just black so that would be perfect for this project because in 10 minutes boom it's ready to I can you know have as many of these as I need so I'm going to set some of these pieces still in their little stacks off to the sides. Because, like, I thought these little components would look super cute 
kind of, you know, just in here, and then maybe making some of that moss scuzz um, <laughs> that I used on the other one out of the diorama um, mixed turf. And kind of, you know, to give all of the elements on my vanity kind of matching, well, elements. Um, but that might be pretty cool. We'll see about that. I've got these pieces over here. Got those ones. These two little Celtic knot type pieces that I really like. So we'll have to see all sorts of floral, some little moons that like need some stuff trimmed off. But I thought that might look really cute. So we shall see. We'll figure it out as we go. But I think I'm going to start with down here. So we have that little thing like that. Because the problem that I'm starting to run into is um, the depth of some of these pieces are not, well that one's got a whole hair just stuck in it. Um, the depth in these pieces are not all necessarily like the same. And I may actually put one of our broken labradorites whoop, right there just to get everything to match as well. So we've got these little, that's an idea. I really like that. But also, I just I really, 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 really like the peacock feathers. So even if I just do the three. So let's start there just to give me some element of this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to work around. So this stuff cleans up. This Mod Podge cleans up really easily with just water. So I just cleaned out my uh, my bin. and can reuse it indefinitely so long as I keep remembering to clean it out. So I'm going to begin here then with applying the Mod Podge hard coat to our surface just to give me something to adhere to. I'm going to make this come out significantly wider than what I need just because I don't want to risk any little pieces not being adhered down. Little pieces of the feather, feather that is. <clears throat> and I want to make sure that everything, <clears throat> excuse me, is laying, no overlaps or anything like that. And think right there yeah and I'm going to very carefully and gently just start patting it in to the glue why are you not sticking to the glue <laughs> please stick to the glue I need to do a thicker layer of glue apparently Second layer of glue, here we go. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna do just a little bit more because this is like a thick feather. Like dummy thick, thick with two C's. So now from there, let's try this again. Again, keeping those feathers out of each other's way so that they can all adhere nicely. There we go. Right? Is that even sticking? Man, they are like resilient. Like maybe a little hydrophobic in that they don't really want to stay down into the glue. There we go. So I'm kind of just painting it with my finger at this point over some of the segments of feathers and we can always come back in and adhere more and we can kind of glob some on top but I just want to like these sections up here I'd like to maybe make sure that they have 
a little bit of movement to them. Like I don't want it to just be straight feathers. Like let's do a little, yeah, I don't need those feathers. But just bring in one side around. There we go. Very cool. And I have some damp uh, shop towel here off to the side. So having done that, I am now going to encase the surface very carefully because again, I don't want to just glob everything down. Like, it would be a little too easy right now to just paint this and make all of the feather segments be completely straight again. No, 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 little bug. No, <laughs> there's like a fruit fly or a gnat or something. I don't want it to get itself stuck. So yeah, doing lots of just kind of stipling, because this stuff will sort of self-level itself out, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, it has on other projects. Let's see how this goes. Because the stem here is really keeping a lot of things, like a lot of the uh, feathers, from relaxing all the way down onto the wood of the box. So what we may do is get all of these segments adhered and then go through and with either some like super fine tipped scissors or something, um, we can go through and cut out that spine of the feather. Again, I know it's not like, I, I can't remember the specific term for it. And before I do too much with feathers, I want to make sure that this one um, dries kind of clear. <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't want to ruin any more feathers than kind of I have to, so. But this is how we learn, right? Cleaning my brush out, drying my bristles, and I'm going to do just a little bit more just to make sure that it's nice and even, trying to not have any brush strokes right over the center, like focal point of the feather, like the eye of the peacock feather. There we go. And so, while that, hopefully, every time I clean the bristles, I like, mm, I'm going to go back in and mess with it some more. So, <laughs> while that's doing its thing, we could start maybe looking at the front, or maybe I could test out a design on the back. I actually think I have some lids for those somewhere, but I don't know. Those off to the side, they're nice and little. I'm gonna scooch these off to the side, they're nice and little. And those guys. And then over here, I've got my big stuff and my moons and my. Because we'd have our hinges, but we could totally do. Like this, I had made a cast of like a discontinued belt buckle. It might be discontinued. It might still be available though, too. So, now let's see if I can get a different angle for you guys. Okay, so I am setting this off to the side just to keep it drying and getting anything gooby on it. And I'm going to work a bit on the back of this piece. I'm just kind of test fitting right at this moment. Just some different elements to see maybe what I like, maybe what I don't like. I don't know if 
I want to use the Thor's hammer there, or oops, or if I'd rather use something a little more. Lunar, and maybe just some cute little roses at the bottom, or maybe we could put some like moss or something around there. And I've got a lot more of those ones too, so I could kind of repeat that motif throughout if we wanted. Kind of like just that size actually. Or we could add layers. That's always an idea. Or what if we don't have something centralized and we just do. I don't think I have enough space for both of these. Mm. Barely, they're really, really tight. <laughs> ah, yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to fit them. Does that button up against each other? <clears throat> now we can come in here and just take off some of that flashing. It can really help. Maybe. I don't know if that would actually help, but we'll see. Or we could have... That one's definitely going to need heated and flattened. Yeah, again, I don't really think that gives us enough space. I think these guys will be better utilized on, like, the sides where we do have a little bit more space. Ooh, the heat gun's definitely heating up now. <laughs> oh. It's the only thing I don't like about this heat gun is it, like, constantly drips. I mean, it's always ready to, like, I mean, it heats up so fast, but... Could also just do... Ooh, a big flower. Maybe a flower rising out of the moon? Maybe a flower with... That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Actually, the third little moon just right here. Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> Again, the indecision. I am wrapped with indecision. I think because I've always seen the Thor's hammer presented like hanging down like this. nice. Oh, I like that. Let's do that. As long as it doesn't interfere with the um, hinges. Okay. So now I'm just going to come in with our hot glue. Now this glue binds really, really stinking well with the resin. So... And it binds pretty well to wood, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about that either. But I really like using a high temperature glue gun because it stays malleable for longer. And I feel like it binds pretty well. There we go. Oops. 
so now I'm actually, well, I don't want you to be using that. Um, I'll just use the whole box. I just want something to prop this up. Oops. In the front. That way I can see more clearly. Hmm. Coming in now, and I've got a whole bunch of hot glue sticks over here to the side ready to go because I eat them up. Like, because they're just the shorties, but still, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> and again, don't judge it just yet. It's a project half done. So I think the bit of moss to like taper everything out will go a long, long way, hopefully, in getting this to look more like something that's on purpose, and less like something that just has a couple of pieces of resin hot glued to it. And to keep things symmetrical, I'm looking at where these different points are in orientation to each other. So like holes from the screws, where they are in relation to different parts of the pieces. I like that quite a bit actually. And now from here, we can start to decide um, if we want, because I could snip off this little bit right there and we could do that in the like median on the side and we may do that on the top or we could start with just some little swirly bits whoops well that stuff's already on there <laughs> pretty good that's good I'm going to use this roll of tape. Yeah, there we go. Again, I just want to be able to get like a good straight on look at it. Now we may be able to take... Oh, that's cute. We don't have to add it yet, but it is cute and I like that. We could do some flowers. And I don't want to force the floral thing. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I can do it out. Like, I only like doing flowers if it makes sense. If that makes sense. these little pieces it's just the same as those but no they don't quite fit too little too big so I'm gonna set them over on the big stuff side but yeah we've got a whole mess of these little swirlies and we can start just experimenting with that layout okay I'm actually going to switch off my hot glue gun and I'm going to go back to using the Mod Podge using a much smaller brush this time because I'd like to be a little bit more controlled in how I'm adhering. And I'm just gonna kind of, I'm globbing it on. Like you can see this stuff doesn't really it's not super drippy or runny or whatever terminology as long as we don't do it too thick or leave any like big globs 
Now I am going to go ahead and do this on both sides though, um, because I'm going to try to build this up symmetrically and establish a little bit of a design because if we can get it going here on the back, then we might be able to determine like the density of, you know, resin components per inch or something and figure out how much we're going to need to like do the whole band around. <laughs> okay. So start by finding, yep, there's two little pieces that match each other. And I'm going to do that one, boop, right there. And we can totally go in and, like, add um, some preserved moss and stuff to this to kind of fill in those gaps. We may actually use some of that halo paint now that I'm thinking about it because it's got a wonderful opportunity to separate nicely. Okay, I'm going to my glue sticks back up out the way. We got some big boys here. They're kind of just chunky pieces. Okay. Okay, that matches that one. So that one mirror images. We'll do that on the other side. Really feels like this side's wider than that side, but I didn't measure anything first, so we're winging it anyways. And again, just trying to get them, I'm focusing on like this little point right there is lined up with the middle on both sides. And just trying to keep it the same in relation to where it's sitting. And we will definitely be putting more Mod Podge over this to uh, seal it in a little bit further. We could actually use a little stick to apply <clears throat> some Mod Podge to the backs of our pieces, because we've got these guys here. Let's see if I have any that are a mirror image of each other. We do! How fortunate that I would grab those. Normally I have to rummage a bit. But I'm just gonna set that like that right there. Sure. And then this one. It's not very flat, so we'll grab a different one. And getting some Mod Podge directly onto the back of it. Or you could be using like tacky glue or something as well to do this, but I really like the Mod Podge because it really does dry clear, at least in my experience. Now, some, ooh, there's a dog hair in that, well, dog hair is like rebar in crafting stuff, it just holds everything together. Um, something that's complicating this is the back of this, these small resin pieces. The resin that I use sometimes shrinks and we'll have like a little bit of a like a lip on the back of it that it doesn't quite want to lay flat so <clears throat> just something to be mindful of it's not a game breaker but it definitely 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 affects things so so i'm actually going to use this guy here and let the paint come to the tip this is just more white paint it's just in an applicator, not white paint, um, glue. <laughs> you can see, going just as slow as it can. <laughs> That's why I store my tacky glue upside down. But we can go ahead and start. Gotta love that applicator tip. Because it'll let us just bloop. And then put that right there. Again, I don't want to get anything too high up, because you'll notice how there's like that little bevel right there. That way the box can actually open. Now, I'm designing this so that the box will only, like it's going to have a chain that keeps it from flopping all the way back. <clears throat> there we go. 
And there's a whole lot of emptiness in between these that I'll be able to fill in with like faux greenery or different things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I didn't need a flower. <laughs> I just don't know if I want to go the floral route yet. So I can always add more stuff in later. Oh, and you can see on these guys. Oops, with that clear or uh, oh my gosh, I can't even word help. Um, with the PVA glue, the white glue I just added, it's just mm, sliding down a little bit, but now it's starting to to stick. It's not perfectly symmetrical on the back, but it didn't have to be. Yeah, I think this will. I think this will be a good thing. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> Or it might just be on the back, and we'll do something completely different on the rest of the sides. So, now that that's done a little bit, I'm going to set it over here to dry. And now we can grab this from up here. Oh, and it's starting to dry up nicely. And so now we can... Hmm... Nope, still don't want to use, like it's got a, if you saw whenever I pushed on that, a whole lot of glue kind of came forward, but we could still, while it's doing its thing, add in another feather. Again, I just clipped it with my clippers, oops, zoom in back out. Making sure all the dog fur is out of the feather. <laughs> and that would land like right there. Is what I would do with that guy. And then do I have one that would lean off to the other direction? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. There we are. Setting that off to the side. And this one would settle in just right there. Very cool. And then from here, <clears throat> we could do where there's like, oh, that would look kind of neat. Just a little flower in the center or a moon. Maybe not a moon because I want to cover up where we're going to be removing the stems from. We could do these guys melted down, kind of coming down like a, I don't know, I'm afraid that would look like eyes and a mustache, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> if you're going to make your jewelry box look like a mimic, don't make it look like a silly mimic, just in case. I, I don't know, you do you. <laughs> don't let me tell you how to live. So we may do this guy in the middle. Oh, he's got all sorts of, oh no, that's water on it. I was like, okay. Why is there dog hair all over? I mean, I knew this one was a dud because it didn't come all the way to the edge, but I was like, dang, that is a lot of dog hair. <laughs> we could also could just do a lavender right there in the middle. Ooh, that'd be cool because I've got a whole mess more of broken ones. I actually think we're going to be listing up on our website. Um, this is more pertinent for the stuff for the folks who are like watching during the premiere as opposed to like people who might be watching this in the future but I don't know, if it's if you're in the future uh stop by our website maybe we have some broken cabochons up for sale i just feel like i don't know something amazing could go right there hmm. so i think i'm going to put a little ooh, lifted it up a bit i'm going to put a little bit more glue down and try to get these other feathers going because I, I do definitely want to keep going with the feather thing. So again, just pouring, oh that's more than enough for sure. So I'm just going to get a whole bunch laid down, that way the feathers will adhere. I'm 
just grabbing that up by the stem, making sure all the feather, the fronds of the feather are traveling. And patting that down. And I think what I may do is just leave this one here like this and let these feathers dry in a little bit. That way I don't get quite that painted, like like the, the feathers get smeared with the paintbrush look. And I may actually go through and trim right there after it's dried as well. So again, just getting some of this laid down. Cleaning our brush because I really like this brush and I don't want to lose it to the glue the way I've lost so many brushes before. <laughs> okay, just making sure it's doing its thing. And I think I'm actually going to pull off yep, that one. That way we can set it in a little bit closer to the other feather without covering up the eye. Oh, you know, speaking of eyes, a painted dragon eye would look super cool right there. So I'm just patting, patting those down just to get them set. And now from here, I will set this off to the side. So I actually kind of want to show you guys is how I'm having them dry so I have like there's that one I just pulled out a drawer and I've got it just sitting there drying so now from here I know I did just wash my brush but I am going to go ahead and use up the rest of this Mod Podge real quick because I'm gonna do a whole bunch of coats or rather I'm gonna do a generous coat on everything that can take it and then I'm gonna let it dry probably overnight and come back to this project tomorrow with a fresh brain um, hopefully a solid night's sleep under my belt and we'll just go from there but yeah definitely gonna get everything at least one coat of Mod Podge to start getting that drying. Though I don't know, I kind of wonder how stuff adheres with hot glue to a Mod Podged surface. Harumph. I did not think of that. Until literally just now. So I don't know if this is going to be the best thing to do, but it's what's happening. So I will see you guys here in the future through the magic of editing. Okay, so I lied to you. I know I said I'd see you tomorrow and it's still the same day, but I did kind of decide to go ahead and go over all of this stuff with some Mod Podge first. Because I'm going to be having to lay down some paint on all this and um, I'm using the Mod Podge as a little bit of a primer. I may actually go through as like some gesso or something as well just to get it to um have a surface that paint will want to stick to because i worry about this smooth resin not picking up the paint very well so i'm just coming in and i'm stipling in the mod podge hard coat hoping that that accomplishes something um <laughs> Yep, just glob, glob, glob. That and I'm hoping that if I get it down into those crevices and it starts to maybe puddle a little bit, that it will help level the surfaces a little bit, like kind of gradiate things in together. 
<clears throat> instead of it just being like flat wood and then bam something glued to it like if we can smooth it out and make it all look like it was cast together like simultaneously I think that'd be super cool I don't think that's possible with just Mod Podge but we shall see and I am going to go through and do it to the hammer and everything as well because like all this stuff needs to be able to have had paint on it. And this is a perfect way to use up everything in my pot. That way I'm not wasting anything. That and it's quite frankly it's just fun. Now I don't want to close up those holes for the um hinge screws for the hinges. Whoops, now that one just kind of moved a little on me. I guess that is a perk to using the hot glue is once it's cool, it's like set. And I really like that instant. Okay, it's the glue set, I can move forward. We might also be able to use this Mod Podge as a filler for if our resin had any like little bubble holes or anything in it. But yeah, Ooh. if we get it too thick, it will start to run. So, or if we lay it on too thick, rather. But I'm just. Also, I wonder if this, I'm going to experiment a little bit and see if this stipling texture will translate through, because that would be a really cool kind of background to have, I think. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping with the tips of my brush. then yeah I'm gonna do it all do it all textured no I want those ones not textured give it some contrast there we are okay now I will meet you guys back here in the future I am removing some of the Mod Podge because I don't want to lose the detail of the knot work on the in spirals on this hammer Okay, I'll meet you guys back here now. Okay guys, so this is how it's coming along so far. We have Mod Podged, painted and Mod Podged the insert. And I've done at least one layer of Mod Podge around this entire thing. Like the entire base, which I'm really, really pleased with. We'd actually topped this off just a little bit with some more... Um, paint to try to get things to settle and so what I'm gonna do real quick is try to find my paint I'll be right back okay so we have our halo blue gold and halo violet gold the mirror paints and we have our mod podged and like painted and sealed box front and I'm going to be testing, now this is actually, this isn't the front, this is the back of the box. And I just want to test over here in the, uh, these sections over, like, the channels on the side. I'm just getting some paint from the cap. And I'm just going to kind of stifle and splotch it in. Because I actually want to be leaving quite a bit of paint. Like, I want to be kind of heavy-handed with it. And I'm trying to not get it on these... <clears throat> like, detail pieces where it's raised. Excuse me. Um, but we are going to be painting over that with, like, probably some copper or something later. So I don't mind uh, being a little messy. Okay, 
so now we have that. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this purple. It's super thick, but that's okay. And I'm just going to staple it in with the green. Just so that it's kind of coming together. I'm going to rinse it out again. Cleaning up my cap. I don't want to I mean I say I don't want to cross contaminate it but then I'm here like having horrible lab practices <laughs> so if I really didn't want to cross contaminate it I'd be using like uh, a, a paint palette or something but here we are okay so having splotched that in I am now going to come in with a damp brush like a pretty soggy brush actually And I am just stifling in some water to get this to separate some. Because I think we'll get some cool results. And I, I want to do this before it has an opportunity to dry too much. Because we want to do this while the paint is still wet. So we can get a really nice sort of separation. But we also don't want to muddy it up, so it's it's precarious <laughs> a little. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this green to this side. But you can possibly see now, it's really starting, let me see if I can, you can really see it's starting to get that little bit of blue separated. So I'm going to put the caps back on my paint, and I want to let this dry. But yeah, I think that's going to be super neat. Because I had thought about like gluing in moss or something, but I think, I think this will be okay. To just do it like this. Because our next step now is to do these same things, but on the actual front of the piece and then across around on the top. So I'm going to set this insert off to the side somewhere. There we go. And I'm going to be using some white glue to attach. Some of these pieces. We have quite a few to choose from. So let's kind of go back over and review what we have here. Let me, let me scooch the tripod around so that we can... Yeah, we have four of these bigger pieces. And I do have the resin and stuff to make more of these for if we decide we don't have enough. But it looked like we used one of these on either side and one of those on either side. Oh, that one's super pretty. I like that. I like this one too. And we got a bunch of those. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, that goes on that side. Ooh, these are mirror image. Very cool. I love the mirror image stuff. It makes me very happy. So I think since I'm not going to be... Um, since I'm not going to be putting the moss and stuff in between the decorative pieces, I'm going to have them be a little more densely packed, I think. And I'm also just going to try to... Oh, there's another one of those cute ones. Cool beans. And I'm just lining these up on opposite sides. 
these guys are a little too big. Like, they're a little too pokey outy. Oh, some more of these ones. And I may actually, just for convenience's sake, I may be using the UV resin. Because it's a perfectly sunny day outside. Um, I may be using UV resin to recreate more of these for farther along on the top. Okay, so now we can try to figure out how these will fit together really nicely over here on the sides before I start gluing stuff in place. Is that? Are these? Yeah, those are a little too wide. I don't think we'll be using those. I don't know if we'll be using those. So yeah, just kind of rough fitting things in. do this one, then we'll do this one, then we'll do, oh it actually looks like I have some extra. So yeah, just getting that mirrored up on each side. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, and then we'll have these for going around and over. Excellent. So I actually think I may use, now nah, I'll stick to using just the, the craft glue, but I think I'm actually going, mm, diamond glaze? It's a dimensional adhesive. No, just, just glue. Just more of this stuff, the craft and fabric glue. Okay, so I'm going to move them over. And I'm going to use this stiff brush. Like, it's probably one of the cheapest brushes I have, but it's also probably one of my most used. Because oftentimes if I have, like, a nice expensive brush, I'll, like, never use it because I don't want to ruin it. But if I've got something where it was, like, a dollar store 12 pack, it's like, oh yeah, let's use that one. <laughs> And I'm just spreading this around nice and thick. And then leaving that on there, I'm going to press these down. Because <clears throat> we will be going back over this with the Mod Podge. So, it'll have another layer of adhesive kind of on top of it. But we just want to make sure everything's nice and globbed on there. Oh no, I did not think this through. Okay. Little too nice and globbed on there. Maybe super gluing would have been a better idea. So I don't want to lose any of these details, too. Okay, fortunately that's a thin enough glue that it is settling into the crevices nicely. Because this one piece is like, kind of curled. So I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to plug in my 
Oh, geez, and I'm not even in frame. Really, Vaughn? <laughs> I am going to plug in my heat gun and then uh, try to heat this up so that I can shape it down. All right, y'all, science time. So I want to have heated it just enough that it's malleable. There we go. And then if there's some way that I could like pin it down to make sure that it stays nice and flat like that. It's actually surprising how quickly the resin takes to being heated and reformed. Yeah, and already it's not curling back up. That is just phenomenal. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so checking the shapes on these guys, all of them are pretty good. So I'm just going to scooch everything over. Oh no! Well, the good news is, is we're gluing it down, so I just broke it, but we'll just glue it back into place. <laughs> oh no! Well, I guess it's good this is for me and not for sale. Ooh, and I just got a peek at our paint drying. This is looking awesome, y'all. Bloop. Big old glob. Gonna put the cap back on. Yeah, I don't know. I just, the cap of this one just doesn't deliver very quickly. So I like to just glob it on and then use a paintbrush. And I'm just stipling this around, making sure I'm in frame. Very cool. And then I'm going to actually scrape some glue off onto the back of this one, because we can shift it around as we go. Clean out the precious 10 cent brush. <laughs> and now from here, yep, we'll just smush, smush, smush. Clap, clap, clap. There we go. I'm sure I've already said this, but I should have the links to where you can purchase the molds for these down in the video description, or at least the closest thing to them, because a lot of these molds I've had for like quite a few years at this point, um, and it might not, some of them might not be in production anymore, but I really like using um, stuff like fondant molds and different things like that, like even candy molds, they don't have to have that super shiny surface to be good for this purpose because we're painting over it. So we actually want a little bit of maybe tooth and texture to the, uh, to the cast resin. Okay, there's a little too much glue around this one. So I'm just going to stifle to remove it. Again, cleaning the brush. I like having a first a wash water and then a rinse water over here by me. And you can see over here, this one is already starting to dry. So we're just going to leave this be. Maybe wipe a little bit off. <laughs> this is such an old, flimsy, cheap wood for the most part that I don't mind globbing on so much um, glue that the box is going to be mostly glue and Mod Podge by the time it's done, but that's nah, alright. Okay, so let's set this off to the side for it to dry the rest of the way. And then we can pull this guy back forward 
and so you can really see that is some cool separate oops <laughs> as it was drying some cool separations of like the blue and stuff I really really like that I hope it stays as it dries it's apparently still not completely dry yet so I'm going to let it chill but we could go ahead and how do I want to do this I think I have some I'll be right back Okay, so I thought I had something called Rub and Buff, and I can't find it anywhere. So I'm going to, I think, do the same thing that we were doing over here on the sides. But very carefully to not get it, like, everywhere, everywhere. I mean, I can always come through and paint some more. But, uh... It, it's, it'll be easier to not have to worry about a ton of cleanup. So, still just kind of stipling. This around. And again, this is the back of the box, so I'm not as worried about if it's like the best thing ever. Um, this is the spot to be doing experimentation so that I can decide if I want to replicate any of it on the front. Any little bits that I get on the rest of the box, I'm going to kind of tidy up with some more uh, black paint after the fact, like after everything's dried. And on these parts, I may actually do some moss and stuff um, around them, but we'll see. Okay, so now now this one I think is going to be super duper cool. Because there's that whole surface area for us to have stuff settling into. And I don't want to overwork it. I have such a tendency to overwork pieces like this with the paint. But really, we just gotta let the paint do its thing. And you can see it's starting to separate out into that really pretty blue already, which is like my favorite color, <laughs> like right now. So, yep, just leaving it be, putting the caps back on these paints. Yes, super duper cool. Yep, okay, so I'm going to leave that, and I'm still waiting for other things to dry. So, well actually, I'm going to set this off to the side very carefully. Oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> Especially from further back, too. So here we have the lid of our box. And if you remember last, we had done some mod podging of the feathers to get them to fit down. Um, I need to do some trimming over here of the feathers. Am I even in frame? No, of course not. <laughs> I never do that maliciously, by the way. I always get somebody yelling at me, oh my god, stay in frame, or I love it, but stay in frame. It's like, I know, you guys, I know. And I apologize. I, too, am frustrated and disappointed, but doing my best. So 
so I'm just coming through trimming off these excess they just overlapped a little too much because I want it to look like there's like metal bands over now I really feel like if I can avoid having if I could avoid mod podging the actual eye like because you can see on this one here it just I don't know it loses a certain amount of depth and so what I'd like to do where are you at here it is because I have this dichroic glass fused glass cabochon that I made that I'd like to set right there in the middle and I may actually want to lay a fresh peacock feather over that center one because I really I really feel like I did a a disservice to the feather to have it be completely covered by the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to come in here and snip that. And I'm actually going to remove quite a few of these lower feathers. and maybe just lay it down over I don't know I don't know if I'll be able to achieve what I'm hoping to achieve here because this spine feather is just so thick that it does not want to lay down So I'm just coming in. Hmm. I'm removing a bit more of just where it's thick spine. Okay, so this sits much more flat. Nice, nice, nice. Very cool. I just I love the way that those feathers look, you guys. So pretty. So let's go ahead and get some fresh glue laid down. Do I have my favorite brush over here? No, it's still in the dish drain drying. Um, so I'm going to use this brush and some Mod Podge. And I'm just going to get this nice and thick. It's very difficult, I think, using feathers in Mod Podging because, I mean, you can lose so much of the depth by just smather, smathering, splattering, smothering it in glue. But you also kind of have to smother it in glue to get that stuff to stay down. <clears throat> so it's tricky. But we'll figure it out. So now from here, doing just a bit more. Just trying to get it really nice and thick so that we can actually set it and start smushing in. And I don't mind covering up these feathers, I just want to leave the main eye of the feather alone. <clears throat> that way it stays nice and shiny and with its full depth and beauty. And so now from here, 
I'm actually going to come in and snip away the spines. Actually, let's use that razor blade again. Am I in frame? Yeah, barely. Okay. So I'm just cutting away at the feathers, the thick, the thick part that doesn't like laying flat. How's it going? Yep. Cool. Okay. So, because here in this center part, we're actually going to be laying down a oopsie, bit of the way that I'm going to set this is I'm going to set this into polymer clay, but then I'm going to use epoxy sculpt, which is a two-part epoxy clay, um, to then set that there in the center. And we may do like, I don't know, a little cluster, I don't know. <laughs> My impulse has been like, yeah, let's put some crystals and mushrooms on everything. And it's like, I don't know if that'll be appropriate for this. We may end up putting the handle back on. I don't know yet, but yeah, I think that there in the center will be really, really cool. I was gonna do another piece of labradorite, but I'm pretty happy with this, I think. We could also Ooh, we could do some little flowers on top and then paint them to be like the uh, to be like the stuff on the back. Yes, that is what I'm doing. Very cool. Okay, so we have a couple of flowers here. Let me just get them <clears throat> test fit them on the f not the ground, but just on my work surface. So we have a mom and two roses. What do we got? Some more lady roses. Those ones might be too big. And we got this little parsley flower. We got these guys here. Oops. Moved one too many. That might be pretty cool. Or we could do mm, that's not my favorite. Sometimes you don't know what you want until you see it. Ooh, I think I might like that. It's an idea. I think I like that a lot, actually. In which case we can and to pop some of this other stuff just back into the bin. Any way that I can minutely tidy up my work surface is like amazing. Because <laughs> this is a... a little bit of a nightmare most of the time. I may keep that one out. Oh, we got this one here too. Yep. Yeah. Like, 90% of what I do is just rummaging. That's okay, though. Oops. <laughs> rummaging and making messes and knocking stuff over. So, just 
Ooh, struggling a bit to get the cap off. I may actually not do the polymer clay section. I may just do these two resin pieces. But we'll see. So now this was cast with like two part um, smooth cast. Do I glob it on like this? Or do I glob it on? Yeah, I'll just glob it onto the things first. I think it's flat enough on the top for me to be able to use these little moons without heating them. There we go. Very cool. Getting that lid back on there. And then just splat. <laughs> that should really help hopefully hold everything down. And if there's excess squeezing out the sides, I'm perfectly fine with that because we will be, I think, putting moss maybe around the edges of these little moons and stuff. Or at least certainly tidying it up with, um, like that black bristled paintbrush that I like so much. Trying to get it a little bit more centered up. I did not realize how off center I had gotten. But that's all right. Oops. I don't want to get too much glue on the surface, so we'll see. Still getting pretty clogged up. That's okay. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to glove up and get the epoxy sculpt. Okay, so this is the epoxy sculpt. This stuff is the black toned, which I love because it's just such a nice base layer. And I am going to just scoop out I don't need a ton so about that much and I use my first finger for part A and I use my first finger on the other hand for part B so that I'm not cross contaminating we could be weighing it this works just fine. This stuff is not horribly picky about mixing ratios. So there we are, two roughly equally sized pieces. Get the caps back on them to keep the dog fur out. And the old fold and roll. So you can see now it's pretty well incorporated, no little gray patches or anything like that. So I'm going to take about half of it and roll it into a ball. And then I'm going to start smushing it around the back side of our cabochon.
and this stuff will hold on really, really well. And so now we can take that right there and just smoosh down and in onto the box. And from here, we can start deciding, do we want some little Celtic knot pieces? I don't think so, because I'm going to have to paint them. And I don't want to risk any kind of like paint or anything like that. So I'm also going to... Oh, that's way too close. Um, Zoom in to about there. Put this right here. And I am going to roll out a bit of a snake. A snake, a snake, a snake. Um, I'm sorry, I spent too much time on the internet. Send help. <laughs> um, so I've rolled it, okay, I'm going to zoom back out until we get to doing the details. I'm going to just roll, 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 roll. There we go, until we put them together. And then we twisting, rolling one way with one hand and the other way with the other. Just make, oh no, it broke our twist. Okay, so we might not do a twisty twist. What are we gonna do then? Oh no. So I think what I'm gonna do instead, we can go ahead and once it gets past its like ultimate sticky point, I just use my bare hands. And I'm just going to pull off some little balls like that and roll them. I'm starting with them quite large, but we'll get it figured out. And I'm just pinching off a bit and then rolling it. Just not wearing gloves it gives me so much more like tactile. Like I can actually tell what's going on. So I definitely seem to have mixed up more than what I needed, but that's okay. Because what I'm going to do with the excess is just keep shaping it into little balls like this. And then I can actually glue them with just regular glue or set them in with the Mod Podge anywhere else that I decide I need them on the piece. So now from here, I'm going to set that and let's go ahead and zoom back in. but we have that little nub set. I'm gonna get some water onto the end of my ball stylus and I'm going to, whoop. No, it's stuck anyways. The water was to keep it from sticking. That did not work, apparently. But we can do one and then we can do, it is not sticking at all. Oh no, apparently, I guess the water got underneath it. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Okay, well maybe we'll just set that one off to the side. I'm wondering if we're able, please pardon my deranged dog, to get some glue down to kind of hold all of this in place. There we go. So you can take that, just set it in there. Like that, and we don't even really have to, I guess, do the little pokey bit in the middle. I thought it'd be cool, but I'm also kind of liking it without it. And we can just start using these nice little round nubs to just set in around. You could also use like maybe wooden beads or something, 
but we can just set them in and around our shape, our tab here in the middle. So I'm going to come down here on this side, we can take it, I guess it just didn't want to hold on to the feather, really seems to be what was going on. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, no, it doesn't want to hold on to the feather. Bah. That's okay. Where did that little look? There it is. My little glue bottle. So I'm going to bring this up. Trying to let the glue come back down to the tip. And just for good measure, usually the epoxy sculpt sticks to itself and other things really, really well. But these feathers are an anomaly a bit. Like I've never had that much trouble with something before. And then boop. And boop. And what's more is we're going to be Mod Podging over this again still, so we don't have to worry about, um, like, we will be doing other layers of adhesive over it, and that will hopefully hold everything into place. And there we go. So you can see, I mean, even if we make a lot of the little nubbies they get used up pretty quick so always make more than what you think you need so that you don't have to stop halfway through and let your glue drip let's kind of get everything there we go I like that. And so off camera, I'm going to continue making a whole bunch of little nubblies and then we will use glue after they have started to cure to kind of set them in around. Though, you know, as soon as I say that, I'd really like while they're still malleable to be able to smush them in around this flower. So let's zoom out a little bit more. There we go. then from here we can actually bloop, get our smush on maybe no okay <laughs> experimenting for sure so we're just making a little boot Doing a little sploot. Boot sploot. Boot sploot and boogie. And just the repetition of a motif through a piece can really make it look like it was very much on purpose. So as we continue to repeat these little bloots bloots all through whoops, the piece, um, it'll start to look more on purpose, hopefully. <laughs> and I do think also possibly using the moss to gradiate things into blending them in. Uh, layers are probably the best thing in the whole wide world on projects like this because something that went awry two or three layers ago can be remedied with, well, the addition of just another layer. And oftentimes, things that look complex are actually just layers and layers of relatively simple things. These, these little rounds are not difficult to make, but used in mass, they can really uh, make some cool effects. 
so I'm just gonna keep doing this and then I'll meet you guys back here for the next step okay guys so this is how the dots are coming along so far and I used up the last bit of clay doing these three gradiated like large medium and small um, but I wanted to maybe experiment with using this Celtic knot leather working stamp I'm just gonna get the tip wet and then smoosh 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 because I'd like to paint these and it'd be cool to have like a little bit of just something to have the paint settle into so I like it maybe we'll see <laughs> if not we'll figure something else out but I just wanted to share that step with you guys and now I'm letting everything dry and I'm really really pleased with it I really like the mandala on the inside still I'm really really digging it okay so I had made some more of these components with UV resin but even on a very sunny day like this, it was still taking a while to dry and just the smell was getting to me, even with it being outside. So I think what I'm going to do is try to make use of these components that I have quite a few of. And I think I'm going to come in and give it like a little, a couple of snips to remove this excess spot here. And I'm going to try to do it in a way that we can still... Well, nope. Okay. Um, that we can still utilize it, but as you can see, it kind of just pinged off to the, you know, other end of the universe, but that makes it be about the right width to be able to fit pretty comfortably into the groove of what we're doing. So I'm just going to come in, do a couple of snips, a couple of snip snoops, and it does look like yeah, it went ahead. Man, that actually got in there. Broke some stuff off. Well, as long as we make it look on purpose, <laughs> then nobody will know. So there's that. We can get in on that side. Take that off. I may actually save some of these little nubby pieces. That'd be cool. Though it looks like I need to also trim down that side as well as this side but especially if you're making your own resin casts of things um, don't feel like you have to stick with just the um, originally molded design like by all means make it make it your own tailor things as necessary but I think that's gonna really give us a nice kind of drape around and I have a few of these so we may I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing this other side. Whoop. Yeah, see that one just took a big old chunk with it. Uh -oh. Well, we'll put that on towards like the back side or something maybe. Whoop. Whoop. Well, actually they both broke in the exact same way. Well, crap. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Some of these resins are definitely more brittle than others whenever it comes to um, manipulating it around. We have these two pieces here. We've got a couple of those. These are from the UV resin that we just did. Let's see what else do we have. Okay. So let's see how we can make do with this. And I just want to kind of scooch everything off to one side and then have it split up evenly for which pieces will be going to where. I'll put these ones back in the bin. Okay. And now I'm going to be grabbing my heat gun again. Because I would like to heat these up and like drape them over. So let's see if we can't 
get that happening. Now I don't want to scorch anything and I certainly don't want, yeah see we're getting some scorching on the feathers. So what I may do is I'm actually just going to heat it up here on my work surface. There we go. Until it starts to get nice and malleable. It doesn't have to get super hot. like. Yeah, you can see it's got some nice drape to it now. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to nestle it in and then hold it down with my fingers as it cools. Like, it is not so hot right now that I can't touch it. But as this cools, it will take on the shape that we're forming it to. I especially want to pay attention to the ends. You know, because they have such a tendency to lift. That sometimes even overbending can get us where we're going. Now as quick as it heats up, it does seem to hold on to heat pretty well too. But, oh, I think this is going to be perfect. I almost feel like I should have done this just right from the beginning. But here we are, and that's okay. And now you can see it's starting to just kind of stay there, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. So now we can do that same thing over here. I imagine using a little bit of super glue um, would be wise just to get things to uh, lay down properly. And again, trying to keep things symmetrical. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do a bit of super glue just here on the ends. To start with, because we'll be covering this in Mod Podge and really using that glue to, like using the Mod Podge to seal everything down. Yeah, that binds almost immediately. Very cool. I know I've got more of these little super glues somewhere, but it's starting to, this one's starting to run out on me. Okay, so we'll place that about there. Yeah, seems to be in a good spot. And then we'll just hold that. It would have been wise for me to pay more attention to just one before starting in on the second one, but I'm not a particularly wise crafter. <laughs> I just do the things. So yeah, we're still getting a little bit of lifting but that's because our glue isn't quite 
This is a gel type, I guess. I don't know, it says rapid fuse, but mm, it's taking its time. I don't have any accelerator, <laughs> otherwise I would use that. But it seems like uh, the past couple of times I've been to the hobby store, whether it's Michael's or Joanne's or what, but uh, they just ha haven't had any accelerator in stock. So I'm going to continue the riveting experience of holding this down while glue dries, <laughs> and then I'll meet you guys back here. Y'all be so proud of me. Look at me using tools. Binder clips. <laughs> they make my world stay together. But yeah, so now we can just kind of, like it's holding on pretty well at the top, but it really didn't want to hold on there on the sides. And I'm wondering if we were to hit this with a little bit more heat right here on that bend. Just to really encourage setting up that curve. And so now we will do the same thing to the back side here. Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. And then we may be able to fill in with some of the little pieces that we had made, but that may not even necess be necessary. So I'm gonna do that off camera though, but I'm, I, I don't know, I felt super clever using those binder clips. So I'll meet you guys back here again. Okay, so the worst thing that can possibly happen is that I have to wait and I can't, I can't, just can't. <laughs> so while I'm waiting miserably <laughs> for other stuff to dry, I've decided to come in and start messing about with things and I'm just dry brushing. I'm just blotting here on the other part of the box, but I'm just dry brushing with a little bit of just that same black acrylic paint we've been using this whole time, just very lightly over the surface of these um, components that we've glued on, that we made out of resin. And it's just, I feel like, cause I didn't want just large masses of the paint. Um, as pretty as I think it is, I, I like it best as a an accent and not as much as just a, you know, it, I don't think it would make the same impact if the whole thing were just covered in it. So, just dry brushing enough to catch the high points and trying to buff in just a little bit to cover up where my paint was a little messy earlier because we're going to be mod podging over all of this again to seal it so I'm pretty pleased with that like I like that quite a bit actually I just blot off the main excess and then come in and just dry brush. I'm still debating about if I'm going to do uh, copper. Randy had actually suggested gold and I don't know, like I might do like a coppery gold. We'll have to see how it goes. But I thought copper would pop really nice against the green, but we'll see how that goes. So that's dry brushing makes such an impact for something that's just a very slap 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 and it's done. <laughs> so like it feels like it should be more work than that. I don't know right now if I'm going to be adding anything to the sides. Oops. I'm trying to juggle here. Um, but I just, I just don't know yet because I'm not entirely certain how this is going to be uh, positioned on my vanity. So I still like the back though. <laughs> so I'm going to set this back off to the side to, to dry. Fortunately, dry brushing does not take very long at all actually to dry. So we are still waiting on the rest of the glue uh, over here to dry actually. So it's kind of globbed up underneath everything. I'm really glad that on the lid I've actually started using super glue which dries much faster so I think now I am going to come through and start painting because you can see there's still undried PVA glue um, 
there underneath the moon and the flowers, which at this point I had done like a couple hours ago. So I'm just coming in with that same black acrylic paint and I just want to get a base layer kind of like a primer down. And then I think we're going to go over the whole thing with some Mod Podge. So I don't know, because I'm wondering, it's like I don't want to skip steps and not get the same effects. But I'm also wondering if I could just paint it with, like, paint this, let it dry, do the halo paint, let it dry, and then Mod Podge that. But I do think multiple layers of the Mod Podge on these acrylic accents wouldn't be a bad idea so so just different things to weigh and consider I'm also considering painting over the moons I think I'm gonna have to just to um like they're gonna get paint on them to so I may paint on them and then like uh remove some of it like we'll see I'm so making this up as I go <laughs> And it's pretty evident, but again, I'm liking it. And already I've learned so much about what I think I'd like to do in future projects because I'd actually made, where is it? I don't know if I can, for those of y'all who've been watching my channel for a while, you might remember whenever I got like super, oops, super hard into miniatures for like a couple months um, and I started making my own dollhouse and these are the stairs for the dollhouse but I designed um, an inkscape and then laser cut out on our Glowforge this Celtic knot design and I was like what if we made something like this and I went through with a Dremel and made it a little bit more three-dimensional and then made a mold of this and then poured resin into the mold and then heated it and drape that over into these channels so that we could have like not like that would be so cool um and so I may actually do that in the future uh with just kind of because I really really love Celtic knot work but I was just doing this with just stuff that I had laying around um but I doubt this is going to be the last box that I make ever so uh lots and lots of ideas for next time. So I think I've decided that on the front and sides I'm gonna just draw some mandalas using this extra fine point paint marker in gold. <clears throat> and I just kind of want to... I'm just freehanding which I really feel like I shouldn't so let's... <laughs> before I get too far ahead of myself I want to go ahead and um like trace like some circles and stuff so I'm actually gonna take this lid and put it down and I'm just gonna line it up and then with a pencil that's like roughly in the middle ish And again, just freehanding. Oh, and I do have a fan going, so you're probably hearing some weird um, turbulence, but that is specifically to get this stuff drying a little bit faster. So let me get a different camera angle here for you guys.
Okay, so I have drawn the bulk of the mandala, but I wanted to be able to incorporate it up here into this part of the um, trunk just a little bit. <clears throat> so to do that, I kind of just want to finish the edges. So I also want this to come in to complete that kind of circle that is actually becoming more of an eye shape. And we'll just continue that patterning as though that gap were never there. So just completing that petal, doing that and that, and then I'm just going to do the circle with a dot and then like a couple of dots. So just enough to kind of finish it and tie it in. And continuing around, finishing that petal, finishing that petal. I guess, yeah, we should probably there we go having just a little bit I mean just hints of it because that gap is there but And it's a little difficult to get the paint down onto the Mod Podge. It doesn't grab quite as well as what it does to the wood. But that's okay. We can still and we'll let it dry and we'll be covering it with another layer of Mod Podge. So I think everything will be okay. bringing that around. Oops, filled that one in a little too much. That's okay. We might just do that over here too. And there we are. There's our mandala from the front and I absolutely love it. Okay, so we've done quite a bit of work, and I've actually decided to phase out the purple on um, the side details here. Uh, I don't know, I just I wasn't feeling it as much for this section, though now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of like, hmm, maybe, but we'll see how it looks after it dries. Um, I've painted up this back piece. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I do really like the purple, but I've added the first layer of copper on the um, those little decorative pieces. There's gotta be a name for those, I just don't know what it is, so. But I'm coming through with my paintbrush here. It's just a flat paintbrush. And I'm going to start stifling this paint into, I guess we'll start with the sides. Now, the Mod Podge is still looking a little milky, but I think that'll be okay. Now, I'm worried here on the sides that we're going to have some, like, uh, runoff. <clears throat> so, I'm just getting it all stipled in. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding in the moisture just on this section. To let it go ahead and start spreading and to see how that comes out and to see how it spreads too. So as we come around I'm just gonna add these to the surface of what we're doing. 
I may end up making our little moons here be copper as well. But we'll see. And I want to be very careful around our peacock feather. I can't quite see in my pot of paint. There we go. So I'm just stipling down into all of the petals. Because I may actually go through and add some purple details with intent on top of our kind of chaotic splotchy that we've got going on here. Again, we'll play it by oops, we'll play it by ear. So, and I'm stipling it in that way it gets down into all the crevices and everything. And that way when we come in with our water, we can just tap it and it'll start to separate and settle into those grooves. And I'm just touching the surfaces. If it starts to run too much, I may come in with a bit of paper towel or something. But I really love the way that it separates. I feel like it matches the tone in the peacock eyes really well. There we go. I love it. Absolutely love that. Okay, and now we're going to add more paint over to this side. So much of this has just been doing a layer, having to wait, doing a layer, having to wait, which is fun. Like, well, okay, no, that's that's my least favorite part, actually. But it's it's been fun in the sense that I keep, during that downtime of sitting here, just, like, looking at the project, mulling it over, um, I, I keep changing my mind and kind of coming up with new, new or different ideas to what I had originally planned. And that's been the fun part because it's given the piece time to evolve. And oftentimes if I'm working on a project that I have this kind of idea in my mind and then I'm just going to like barrel through into it, um, it doesn't give it time to evolve. Whereas on something like this, that's what I have the most of is time for it to evolve. <laughs> so, and that's okay. That is okay. So... I'm just coming in here I'm gonna do one more little bit I really like doing that layer of Mod Podge first because it gives us a little bit of a repel layer that to keep the moisture from just soaking into the wood and that lets it really really separate out so we've got that I've got this I'm gonna let this dry completely just because I really want to make sure that our our blue doesn't run whenever we, because I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to tilt it forward, do around here, I think, um, and then the front section, and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to tilt it and get the other side. And that's probably going to be off, uh, at a, at a frame, not at a frame, but just off camera. I'm going through adding in some of this antique copper by Folk Art to like kind of just re um applying it to these cross pieces still can't figure out what to call them. um but I just wanted to show y'all what I was up to because I'm coming through and adding on top of where we had done the black dry brushing 
I am just touching very lightly with the flat side of my paintbrush with just the tiniest amount of residual paint on there. And I am just highlighting. If I had some rub and buff, I would use that. But I, I could have sworn I had some. Can't find it though. Story of my life. But just coming through and I need to get more pigment onto my brush, but I don't want there to be too much. So I'm actually going to wipe it off on the inside of the cap. And then I'm just going to come through and kind of pet. I want to make sure to just grab the high points. So be very, very gentle. You can always come back in and add more if you want to make that a little bit more intense. But if you can come in and go across the grains, like how I have some long lines here, <clears throat> I want to go across them, just catching the surface as opposed to following along with them because then the bristles will settle and nestle in. And I think this adds just such a nice little effect. When we start to get low on pigment on the brush, just go ahead and put some more on, blot it off, and then keep on going. But I am exceptionally pleased with how this is coming out. And on a piece like this one, you can try coming in from a couple of different angles and see what captures best. Loving how that's looking. And then we just have this last piece. And if you think there might be too much paint on it, go ahead and block some off. Because it's better to just not risk it. There we go. Just... And it... I'm almost, whenever there's a bunch of swirls and stuff, I'm just patting, even. Just really applying that. And so here you can see, I think that really came out pretty nice. Now I'm also going to be experimenting here, and I wanted to share that with y'all also. But I have another color. And this is by Plaid FX. It's a flexible acrylic paint. We don't really need that here in this instance. But this color, the Saber Blue, is so intense. And so I'm just shaking it to get some onto the cap. And that came detached. I know I've opened this before, it just, the inner lid part just got stuck, it seems. Oh, I'm getting my fingers all messy. That's alright. So, just gonna use, I don't know, maybe I didn't open this one before. Ah, uh, did I just open one when I already had an open one? Okay, that's, that's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> not the end of the world and this is not the first nor the last time that this will have happened I am sure okay rummaging about for a very fine tipped paintbrush here we go pretty fine tip right there and I just want to catch a little bit of this metallic blue and I think if I can take it and I, I'm of course experimenting here on the back of our piece because that way if I don't like it it doesn't really matter and I just want to catch in some of these small details I'm almost uh, you know and I don't know I don't know if I super duper like it yeah okay it's not quite the blue just it's not if it were as intense on what I'm doing, I'd have to do a couple of layers, I think. But I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I want to push that this time. 
It's logistic to what we were doing. Let's wash our brush out. Ouch. Oh, we just got stabbed by a porcupine quill. <laughs> so there we are. Yeah, no, that's not my... It's not my favorite at all, actually. I'm going to see if I can't blot it out of there. <laughs> I just, and I think it's because everything else has such a gold tone, like either a gold or coppery tone to it, that putting in the blue that had that silver sheen in it, while it's beautiful, I just don't think it's matching with the vibe of what we got going on here. So this guy's done, I think like the painting on this one so i am going to set it off to the side so it can dry up the rest of the way and we'll need to do one more ceiling layer on it but i do also want to come in and ooh, we've got this one coming along wonderfully because yeah i was hoping this blue would stick around a little better but it just keeps not and that's okay I mean, it's still beautiful, but okay. Ooh. Oh, I'm really glad I had my finger on the cap because I hadn't closed it. Oof. Cleaning up that. Getting some of the paint out of here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start splotting. Stapling, splotting, whatever. So it's, I kind of am wishing that I had a paint that was just a true and intense sapphire blue. Like the same color as whenever this blue is going to separate out just now. I like to just kind of almost grind it in to really stir up that pigment. Getting some water on my brush and then just making sure that I kind of just mix it into all of the paint really. That way it should bring those color separation out. You know, oh, like if I could get it to just stay like that and I don't know how to do it. But we'll figure it out. Rinsing out my brush. Oh, I just stuck my finger in it, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm just trying to put the lid on one-handed. I gotta put down the ducky if I'm gonna play the saxophone. Is basically what this has come down to. Okay, there we go. I've got it balanced off screen. <laughs> Does anybody else remember that Sesame Street skit? See, I don't know what to call it. But it was there like, you gotta put down the ducky if you wanna play the saxophone. I've never quite gotten the grasp of that lesson, but I'm trying. <laughs> Here we go. Gosh, that's so pretty though. Like, I love that so, so much. Okay. So now I'm going to see if I can prop this up just like that. And let's get some copper happening.
and I like to do like the where I'm catching the high points with a relatively dry brush. So just getting a bit of pigment on there and then wiping it off and then I'm just gonna pat 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 oh I like it <laughs> Sorry, I'm switching my fan off so that it's not just blowing the whole time because I don't want to rush anything. So I really want to make sure that I'm not like sticking the bristles down into the low parts of our piece here because I really want to make a nice contrast between the high and low points. Just touching very lightly. Nobody knows. Now, I want to try to get everything that needs to be symmetrical done first, and then I will apply my attention to our focal point. <clears throat> I'm keeping it tilted both so that I can see straight on what I'm doing, but also so that this stuff can stay puddled and dry in place. Though we did get a little bit of trickling down and I think that's okay. I won't be filing any formal complaints. <laughs> Oh, I did say I was going <laughs> to do it all in the... Ah, okay. Stick to the plan, Vaughn. Just pat, 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 pat. I love it. Again, rub and buff would have been, like, amazing for this, especially since we're sealing it. And that can hold that rub and buff in place. Just trying to catch these high points on all our little nubbies that we had done. And now I can just come through and actually dry brush. And this should catch all the little edges of what we're doing. Really loving that. And so I'm just going to, and we can always come back in and add, like, build up more layers of the uh, copper as well. Like, you don't have to feel like it's a one and done, like, that you can't go back and revisit it. It's no, you can work this and rework it as much as you want. Now, it does get to a point though that you might start muddying things up and I feel like the more I tamper with something the more I risk like I really don't want to get paint on the feathers um, and so it's if I can get it right and then leave it alone I will but no pressure mmm I'm loving that Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side because this is still damp 
like down in those crevices so I don't want to try putting the try to start. I don't want to start putting the copper layer on over here on the sides but I am going to come through and go ahead and touch up with just some black because we will be going through and sealing this again with the Mod Podge so I'm just touching up any areas in our main spots that I feel like need touching up. Mostly just removing some metallic effects from where I didn't really want a metallic effect. Cool beans. So I'm going to let this dry some more, and then we will come back and do the highlights in copper. Okay guys, it has dried, and we do have a couple of spots that have some really nice blue in them still, but for the most part it's just faded to that beautiful golden green. And I'm going to come through and I'm doing the strapping, maybe? That could be what it's called and on this first layer i'm kind of just trying to get it um on the highest point like because i don't want to mess up or anything i mean it definitely takes a lot of the pressure off that we're going to be going through and like dry brushing some copper onto the tops of these swirls and stuff anyways but you know, just the tidier we can keep it, the better, I think. And I do want to be doing two to three layers just to get a really nice, bold copper coloring. And it, I think it also helps to reduce the streakiness as well. So there we go really helps using a flat brush. Whoops, oh that's so messy. Okay. We can actually just use a clean paintbrush to remove some of that, but I'll go through with a uh, black paint after the fact. Like after it's all said and done. But using a flat brush that's about the same width as what we want to be painting is very helpful, but I keep pressing too hard and exceeding the boundary of where I'd like to be putting paint down. So I'm just going to come in just doing a bit of a side to side Trying to get all those brush strokes out. And this is a great opportunity to clean up this inner edge where I got my green paint out of control. Or rather my halo blue gold. But yeah, doing a couple of layers of this will make sure that we don't have any patches um, that don't have enough paint on them showing through. So now I'm going to come around, just burnishing a little bit more copper onto the high points. nubblies, making sure I'm not getting any on the peacock feathers. Burnishing them into our moons. I absolutely love, like this is not what I visualized initially y'all, but I don't mind it a bit. Like, I am in love with it. I'm very, very pleased. Okay, so I'm actually going to do both of these, as this is a little bit cumbersome to have 
angled around like this. There we go. Brush, brush, brush. Paint, paint, paint. And so I think I'm actually going to go through and do the finishing coats on this with a spray Mod Podge. Just something that we can do in a couple of uh, brief layers, it dries pretty quick and really build up the coverage. And since we didn't use any polymer clay on this piece, we don't have to worry about any aerosols. Like if we used like an aerosol acrylic spray. Um, in the past there were some of those that I found that just didn't really work out that great. But uh, the Mod Podge Spritz does fantastic. But again, since there's no polymer clay, there's no need to worry about that. Again, just adding a little bit more intensity to that copper sheen. Very cool. So now from here, we can come back to this end, and I'm going to let this dry a little bit more, but we can go ahead and start just dry brushing onto the surface of this filigree, which I think is just beautiful. And I'm just very, very lightly bristling the tips of the paintbrush over the tips of our design because I don't want to press so hard that I accidentally get some on the backdrop or the background rather and we'll just come through and do that again but what a fantastic way to be able to get a whole bunch of detail without having to do like a ton of sculpting or anything like that. So again, I'm just getting a bit of paint onto the brush, getting most of it off onto the border, and then coming through and dry brushing. noisy but coming over and let's do that same thing on this side and of course if you're working on a piece kind of similar to this one like following this form the techniques would remain the same or similar at least um, and so you could make variations on like theming and color schemes and what kind of acrylics and um, you know you could make something nautical you could make something holiday like just what kind of not acrylics but resin cast stuff that you use like you can really the, the possibilities are endless on this of customizing it to make it really your own There we go, okay. So now, I'm actually going to come in and apply the paint from the opposite direction because now I have a view of what we're doing that um, 
you know, it's opposite of what we were doing before. So now I can see a little bit better where maybe some of my paint got overlapped. And I just want to touch up the high points again. So coming through here. Touching that up just a bit. And I'm going to do the second coat on this side as well. And then, y'all, we actually get to start assembling. Um, <laughs> which I'm very, very excited about because, well, for one, I've been working on this for like a month. Um, and like on and off, it's been on my workbench for, for a solid month, though. Um, and I really miss having this up in my temple room where I keep my vanity. So I've been down here doing my makeup and stuff in the mornings and like before bed at my polymer clay station, like at my sculpt station where we're at right now. Um, and I'm just ready to start doing that in the bed or in the in the temple room again. It used to be the bedroom, but we turned the living room into the bedroom because I, I wanted some place to belly dance and do yoga and play my instruments and stuff. And we were like, the living room was the little room. And we like never use it except for to, you know, do yoga and stuff. But we're like, well, let's just make that the bedroom since that's where we spend most of our time when we're not working anyways. And then we can have the temple room that'll basically be like the living room. And Randy was in full support of it. So I was like, all right. But I'm very, very excited to make this wonderful space to share with y'all. Okay. I'm going to start rummaging out all of the hinges and stuff, and I'm going to get that uh, kind of screwed back together. Okay, so these are the hinges that I had used to attach the front. Um, these are the hinges that came originally with the box, and I'm just pushing the pin back into it, making sure that it fits and still works. Yeah, I think that'll still work just fine. So, this one's still drying, so I'm going to set it off to the side, but we can go ahead and attach these hinges here to the front. And I think we had it... How did we have it? Yeah, like that. Okay. Yep, that way the hinge didn't interfere with... So I'm actually gonna super glue the hinge on first. I don't know if this is wise, but here we are. <laughs> Going in without much forethought. Just like typical. Okay. So yeah, I at least did check to make sure that it lined up. We've just got this little thing of crazy glue. I'm hoping that this one will dry a little faster. But man, it's like heckin' hard to squeeze. There we go. And I just want to line it up without gluing myself to anything. That'd be a really great start. You know, it occurs to me. We could hold it like this. Oh no. Okay. Ah! Uh, did I just grab the wrong side? No. Okay. Well, I did so much Mod Podge over the stinking things. And also, I did not think about this, but we are going to be having some little pokey uppy bits of the screws sticking through. So we'll see if we can't figure out something for that as well. But for now, like actually, okay, before we do this, to keep the screws from poking through all of the way, I think we could just use like, like this. Is that a thing that we could do? Like a little strip? 
but I mean it's not painted to match or anything. Let me think. I should I should think about this before I just start jumping in all willy nilly. Oh, almost. I bet I have some wood cut scraps that would be perfect for this. Hmm. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, be in such a rush to get it done that I booger it up. But also... I really want to get done. <laughs> <laughs> too so that's a thing so okay so I feel like I've completely demolished the purpose of using the super glue let's see okay so there's that one Cool beans. And I'm just going to be tightening this in. poking through all the way. Oh, it's just occurred to me. I don't even have to use screws for that. I can just wire it in. Girl. Yeah, we're going to do that. But I'm still going to use the screw to make the pilot hole, more or less, for the, for the wire to go through. Yeah, because otherwise we get this, like, pokey screw poking through and I don't want to I don't really feel like trying to dremel through that we can do that and then I've got this yeah this 16 gauge aluminum wire and I'm going to cut let's see um three inches I'm going to do one segment and a second segment. And I'm going to put, oh no, come on, you can fit through there. You can do it. Yeah, okay. So there's one side. And I fed it through. And I'm going to give it a nice 90 degree bend. And then it'll be about right there. We'll need to do the other bend, but I'm going to see if we can't pull that out. Well, I don't have any of my pliers over here, do I? Okay, well, fortunately this stuff is soft enough that we can just get in with our fingers. Okay, I'm going to grab my pliers. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've grabbed my pliers, and I want to make sure that this has a nice, tight, tidy bend to it. So I'm actually making sure that's kind of squared up. And then I actually want to feed through from the inside, because that is where I would like the flat, smooth surface to be. So just feed it in one end. Just opening that up just a bit. Okay. So there's one end and oh my goodness. <laughs> it doesn't really want to go through, does it? No, we can. We can just deal with that. There we are. Um, 
I was trying so hard to be in frame, guys. I'm sorry. And I'll just pull through like that. Oh, that's so much. I like it. <laughs> and now from here, we can make some little spirals. And I am just bringing this down off to the side and cinching in. So, and you don't have to do spirals. You could just like fold it over and smush it down and maybe put some like, I don't know, epoxy sculpt or something over it. But I really like little spirals and I think this will make me happy to see it. No wiggling. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. Okay, so now we have, let's grab two screws, one for actually attaching and one for piloting, like pilot holding. Yep, we're in frame. Yes, I'm actually recording, I think. It's never something you want to hear from a professional YouTuber. <laughs> I imagine, and I say professional with very loose air quotes because it's like, oh my god, that is so, anybody with that expectation can just lower the bar. There we go. Now here's our other screw, and I'm just doing this to clear the Mod Podge out of the way if I had like a little hand drill, which I'm pretty sure I do somewhere. But I'll just do this. <laughs> There must be easier ways of going about this. This bottom board is so flimsy. If I had had any inclination at all, I should have re replaced or reinforced this bottom bit of wood. But here we are. <laughs> and it'll be alright. You know, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my wire and do a very solid 90 degree bend. And whenever I line this up, I want to make sure that the wire, it's not the edge of the bend or the inner edge of the bend, it's where the wire itself will be coming through. And then just come in right here and give it another really nice, tidy, tight bend. And now we're going to bring this up and fit actually just going to be, this is a very soft wood, so I'm just going to use the tip of this screwdriver to clear out that channel, hopefully. I'm just using my pliers to... push it through directly into my finger. That's always great. It's all right though. If you're not bleeding for your project, are you even crafting? The answer is yes, you shouldn't have to be bleeding on your projects and I'm not bleeding. So that's always good. There we go. Nice and tucked in, nice and flush to the bottom. And let's make our spirals. Oops. Oops. Oh. oh my. So again, just spiraling this around and in. Giving a nice solid smush, maybe with the side of your pliers. This aluminum is such a soft wire that it's very um, accommodating of being smushed. There we are. 
has to make sure that the hinge works. It seems to. Excellent. And now we get to come in and I'm probably just going to gloss over this because it is literally just putting in six screws. So I'm just going to line this up. This was the front of the box that I had detached because it had started to split and needed repaired anyway so I just attached it the rest of the way and at the time I wanted to make like a fold open like diorama miniature fairy scene kind of maybe like stored in a trunk I don't know I thought it would be cool and to this day I still think that's a pretty cool idea but I needed this for something else so my makeup box it has become some of these screws really go in a lot easier than other ones, and that's very frustrating, because it's like, please just, just go in. This one's stripping out, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll meet you guys back here after I'm finished wrestling with this. I'm very, very excited to be lining up our latch in the front. Oh my god. <laughs> what a makeover. Like, not to be this way, but like, finally, oh my gosh, this has been sitting around for a while. A goodly while. Okay, um, I've lost my hinges. There they are. There we go. And again, I'm going to have them with the hinge side out because that way it'll open like this away. So it's just occurred to me I need to move this fan so it's not blowing into the speaker or into the mic. But it is like hot in here and I, d I did some genuine wrestling with this. Um, so wish me luck on this one. Now I am going to go ahead and flatten out these hinges a little bit. They're a bit like bent up. So I'm just smashing them through the jaws of my pliers to get some semblance of restoration. Okay, I'm going to line this up. Yeah, looking pretty good. And... I'm just putting the screws in about halfway before tightening them down all of the way. Because if the front hinges were any indicator, oh, these, like, we're fighting. Oops. And I don't have a drill bit or anything that's small enough to accommodate teeny tiny little screws like this. Maybe if I did more work like this, that might be something worth investing in. But for now, I'll just tough it out. That was not too much of a trouble. There we are. screws of the appropriate size from my little mix mash mismatched box of parts it's like getting me right there in the middle of my palm oh my gosh you guys it's almost done <laughs> like this is literally the last part okay well and then we get to put the stuff in it oh that one went in oh I don't want to speak too soon but that one in e easier than any of the other ones. Now this doesn't have, I had originally planned on doing like a bunch of moss and different things like that. This doesn't have any of that, but I love it just as it is. Oops. 
Oh, well, there's the front just fell down. <laughs> Whoopsie. There's three. It's all coming together. And there's four. Are y'all ready? <laughs> there we have it. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, well, the front just falls open okay I do also need to add there's a couple more things that I need to add and that is going to be um like a chain that goes whenever we open this I also need to touch up right here across the top like right there um which I can do that now Doing any touch ups now, I think, is going to be a good idea. And I'm going to go get the chain. Yeah, that can just stay like that, I think. Very cool. Just spot filling some little scuff marks. Touching up here in the back as well. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to go rummage up some of the components that we'll need for the chain. Okay y'all, so our paint has dried, hopefully, yeah, and we have this chain here that's enameled iron and it is magnetic. Now I don't know if that's going to be helpful enough in what I'm trying to do, but we shall see. So what I'm going to do is, I've lost my screwdriver, there it is, <clears throat> I'm going to put a chain here. So I'm going to start by drilling up, oops, <laughs> well not drilling because I don't have a drill, but I'm going to just start screwing a screw in and see what happens. I really hope it doesn't like split the wood or anything. Unfortunately it seems to be going in fairly easy. But we want this chain to be hooked onto this screw. So I'm going to unscrew it. I'm being very careful here to not strip everything out, but I'm just threading the chain, the last end, onto the screw. And then screwing it in, not super tight. I still want a little bit of movement. Yeah, I think that'll be perfect. And then from here, I only ever want the lid to open just past 90 degrees, but I don't want it like flopping and clomping back. So I'm just getting a measurement of what that is. And then you could cut your wire, but I prefer to, it probably seems odd, but every little ring adds up. So I just open the ring to detach one segment of chain from the other and then close it again. So it really does add up over oh, over the long term. Sorry, the cat's going ballistic or seems to be fixing too. Okay, so I'm going to take another screw and a bunch of screws came in the, the hinge pack. So as well as the screws that I had salvaged from like a different box and all sorts of stuff. So 
scooching some things out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and hook this ring onto our screw and then bring it back. And I want this to land about right there. Oops. You know, I could make this a little easier on myself. And turn it on its side. <laughs> I feel so like, haha! But really, it's, it, it's obvious. I should have just done that to start with. But here we are. And I realize my hands are probably in the way, but all I'm doing is just screwing in a screw. Or trying to. Trying to without stripping out the head of the screw, too. Now, the main thing that I have a problem with with these screwdrivers is they're so difficult for me to get a grip on. So I actually am applying pressure with my left hand, but then coming in and gripping just with my pliers. And the progress is minuscule, but it's progress. And it's actually significantly easier on my hands. cat uh, has me trained when she rings a bell I let her outside but it's past her bedtime so she needs to stay in tonight okay so now we have that chain the, and once we have stuff in the box it shouldn't tip back like that but I was hoping that I might be able to um, glue a magnet onto here and get it to hold itself shut just be like a little bit hey baby um a little bit of a magnetic closure so let's go ahead and try that and then the only thing is going to be whenever i come in to close this oh yeah the chain seems to do nice doesn't really get in its own way that's fantastic So I think I can fit a couple of magnets actually. So I'm going to do three. Oops. And I think if I put them just right here, yeah. I don't know if that's actually going to accomplish anything, but I am going to try. Unfortunately, I do have this little line here from where it was glued, so I can just make sure that I stay on that side. I'm hoping super glue will be enough. I'm definitely going to have to let it dry before. testing it because otherwise the glue will just pull right off. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave that be for just a little bit. I don't know. I know I just said that, but... Try a fourth magnet. Y'all, that's perfect. It's just enough that I can kind of knock it loose. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's so hard being a kitty. 
because I wanted it to be just enough that whenever I open this, oh. <laughs> no, that's probably going to get old, but it just gathers up the whole chain too, apparently. Hmm. I dislike it grabbing the chain more than I like it being there, which may be problematic. Callie, no, baby. I don't want you going outside at night. We talked about this. Yeah, and certainly one magnet just doesn't do it. Oh, it's on there though, isn't it? Well, this might just be life now. And really, if whenever I open it, Mm, that's really harsh and romello. We could use a non-magnetic chain. <laughs> you know, since... Oh, I didn't even think of that, though. Alright, let me go rummage to my stash and see if I've got a non-magnetic chain that I can use. Okay, so I actually have this old metal gallery chain that actually yellows, so I haven't been using it for... Um, for jewelry making but if it yellows over time that would actually be perfect for this project here because it would just start to match and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on its side because we may still be able to just use the magnet joining to the screw but I'm going to come like the third link in I think and I'm gonna open it. Oh, excuse me, I've got a runny nose all of a sudden. Pardon me. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. Oh, goodness. Okay, and then I'm going to come in the third chain from the top up here. Actually, I think the fourth chain, just so I can get my hands in there. Ah. Uh, it's just a little too tight, so I am going to, as much as I hate to waste one, I'm going to snip it. And then, how many inches is this? This is about eight and a half inches, so we'll measure out eight and a half of our, well, let me test and make sure. Oh, it's magnetic too. <laughs> okay, so here I have some aluminum wire, which is very much not magnetic, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I'm going for. And we will measure out eight and a half inches. Give it a snip. Now with the aluminum wire, it is so soft that I do just snip it. Oh, put this chain back into its bag to be used another day for a different project. Now we can take this open ring, hook our aluminum chain on, and close that ring. And then I just don't know how to get my hands in there. That's such an odd angle. I guess I could just take the screw out. But after working so hard. Ah. <laughs> okay, we can do this. So I'm going to take a ring off of this chain, which is, is about an 18 gauge, not standard wire gauge, um, wire. Just for for no one's sake. <laughs> this is where, hopefully, having some dexterity will come into play, but also having magnetically charged pliers. It's getting really old. There we go. you slipped, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. 
What's proving very difficult here is not being able to get my left hand in at a good angle. And the magnetic pliers that seem to just be repelling. But, did we do it? Almost. Let's get that closure just a little better. Oops. There we go, we did it. Hopefully. So there's still enough of a closure because of the magnets but it opens and closes without any kind of odd struggle. <laughs> There's always some sort of unanticipated oddness at the end of a project, but that's okay. Now we get to do the loading of the stuff. And then I get to take it up to where it's gonna live. So, there's the insert, which I am not gluing in because there's no telling how this setup might evolve. <laughs> now, I do have one bottle upstairs currently um, that will be represented here by this bottle of Mod Podge. <laughs> but it's my, my serum that I make that... Okay. And this is what I had been using. We'll see if using one of these little Chessex dice boxes will be good for. Oh, I dropped that on the ground. It's got all sorts of fur in it now. There's those things. these things, there's those things, there's these things, which I don't even know if I need this one, I don't really use it that much, only if I'm doing like a super duper glam look or something. And then, I only use one of these, this one's an older color that I don't I'm a little too pale for it now <laughs> and then my perfumes yeah we could actually huh. I'm gonna do another Chessex box just to maybe be able to fit all of this extra stuff in there Oh, and then a couple of essential oils, but I actually have a separate place for those to go. Wow. Just like that. Now we do still have some space that if I wanted to, we could glue some boxes to the front here. Here's my makeup brush that I use. Um, but I'm not entirely certain, again, how this will evolve. I just really, really like having some place to keep all that clutter. Because you wouldn't think it to look at my work surface. But I really love being organized. And a big, like, the biggest part of that, I feel, is everything having a place where it goes. I almost forgot the most important part. My SPF. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, it all fits. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me during this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. Um, and if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Uh, if you enjoy the channel and would like to support it and participate in our exclusive content and craft along club and all that stuff, links for everything are down in the video description. But really the biggest thing is to just keep it crafty y'all and I will see you next time. So until then, Thank you so much and happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>